What do we got here? The first read. Oh, look who's back, everybody. Sherry's Berries. Oh, must be a clam day coming up. Oh, yes, it is. Valentine's Day is next week. Finding the right gift can be tricky. Uh, Tell a personal story relating to Valentine's Day. Well, you know, I think it's bullshit. You know, I always hated it when I was fucking younger. I think everything's uh, overpriced. And everybody just sits there looking around at everybody, you know, and then somebody gets proposed to and they're like, oh, my God. And then, you know, even if you already proposed to the one you're with, they're still kind of fucking jealous and sad, you know, and then you just sit there splitting a dessert. That's the part I hate the most, just sitting there splitting dessert, because that means I've wanted to leave for at least an hour and 10 minutes. I just feel like you're distant tonight. Um Oh, here's an example of the story. Why you give Valentine's Day gifts, getting the wrong gift, getting the right gift, horror stories of waiting until the last minute, etc. I don't think you should get him a gift. I don't think you should get him anything more than Sherry's Berries. The fuck are they getting you? Where is the copy for what the lady is going to get the guy? This is such a fucking bullshit. This this. This whole holiday is completely fucking sexist. And, I, I, you know, I, you'd like to hear more of uh, a little chatter from the fucking feminist ladies there about this. You know? Why are you taking me out? Why don't I take you out every other year and then I get you a gift? Come on, ladies. Let's have an even playing field, right? All right. You want to give something unique that she'll love, but you don't want to spend a zillion dollars. You know? You want to say, hey, I'm really like you. You know, I really like you, but I'm not quite in love with you yet, but I'd like you to continue fucking me. What would be a perfect gift? Sherry's Berries. Freshly dripped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. Starting at only nineteen ninety nine. That's over 40% savings. That's less than a hooker. And if you don't want, if you really want hero status, you can double the berries for just 10 bucks. Just go to berries.com, click on the microphone and type in my code B-U-R-R. These strawberries are picked at the peak of freshness. No, they're not. They never are. They fucking get yanked, and then they throw them, and they ripen on the truck. They ripe, All fruit ripens on the fucking truck without the nutrients from the vine. To ensure the best gift experience, they're huge and dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness, topped with chocolate chips, chopped nuts, and decorative swizzles. Delivery is always guaranteed. Oh, we'll get them there. We just don't know when. Here's the only way to get these amazing valent this amazing Valentine's Day deal. Juicy, huge, and freshly dipped strawberries starting at just nineteen ninety nine or double the berries, you fucking whore. For ten dollars more, visit berries dot com. Please spell out the word berries. B E R R I E S dot com. Click on the microphone on the in the uh, the top right hand corner. And type in Burr, B-U-R-R. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and enter my code today, B-U-R-R. All right. Pro Flowers. Look who's here, everybody. A little candy and flowers. You ought to buy an old school outfit, too. A little derby, three-piece vest. Three-piece suit, I should say, with the vest, a little pocket watch. All right. Pro, pro Flowers. Sometimes, parentheses, okay, all the time. It's hard for us guys to say what we feel. What if there was a gift that said said it for you? Jesus, see how sexist this shit is? You're too fucking dumb to say what you're thinking. Why don't we handle it Why with a bunch of shit we ripped out of the ground? Imagine a gift that was thoughtful, easy, and she'd love. And that sent your message perfectly all in one. Yeah, here's some beautiful flowers. They're beautiful like you. You get it? I call that a win on Valentine's Day. Tell a personal story relating to Valentine's Day. Well, I always thought it was fucking bullshit. I always thought it was a bullshit fucking holiday. You know, you pay way too much money. And then halfway through, some other woman gets proposed to. And even if you already proposed to your woman, she's still looking over like, oh, I don't feel like I'm the fucking queen of the ball. They really like these personal stories. Example, why you give Valentine's Day gifts, getting the wrong gift. Jesus, the same people write this shit. Pro Flowers are the flower pros that make Valentine's Day easy. Trust Pro Flowers and get this year done right. Pro Flowers is offering my listeners, plus any other podcast they advertise on, 100 blooms of love plus a free glass vase for just $19.99. Plus this week only, 
You'll get free chocolates for when you order fr- by Friday. Ah, they're cutting into Sherry's Berries turf. There's going to be a fucking war. Go to proflowers.com and use my code BURR, B-U-R-R. Proflowers is quick and easy and delivers for Valentine's Day. Deliveries for Valentine's Day is guaranteed. Pro Flowers are guaranteed the last seven days of your money back. It's a no-brainer. Here's the only way to get amazing Valentine's, the amazing Valentine's Day deal, including the free chocolates. Go to proflowers.com, click on the blue microphone in the top corner and type in BURR. That's proflowers.com. Click on the microphone and type in my code BURR. You must order by Friday at midnight in order to get this deal. Wow, that's going to be an issue, huh? They're cutting right into Sherry's Berries. Sherry's fucking berries. All right. Oh, Jesus. Here we It's that time of year. It's that time of year when you can say, get me some chocolate covered strawberries. Sherry's berries, everybody. Oh, this stupid fucking holiday Valentine's Day is just a couple of days away. Huh? Where are you in your relationship that you're actually nervous that you have to fucking get your broad something? Wouldn't it be nice if you could... I'm not even going to read the copy. Wouldn't it be fucking nice if you could just click on something and go, yeah, you fucking, you know? You know why Von Miller ripped the ball out of Cam Newton's hands? What if you could just put a box... Of, you could do the exact opposite. The football... It's a box of fucking candies, right? And rather than ripping it out of her hand, you just place it in there. Or maybe Sherry's Berries is Cam Newton. You go, give me that fucking thing, right? And you just frisbee it over to your wife, girlfriend. There you go. Huh? What'd you get me? Yeah, nothing, right? What'd you get, huh? A new thong? Oh, gee, thank you. Way to go out of your wake. Um, Valentine's Day is just a couple of days away, everybody. It's, and there's only one way to win Valentine's. To win? Jesus Christ, I, I, I resent this copy right now, that I actually have to talk to my male listeners here like they have to dance for their women. Ladies, by the way, why don't you get your, why don't you get your man a box of chocolates? <laughs> I should do it. Give him a fucking box of chocolates and just give him a little fucking little pinch of the cheek there. There you go, dude, cutie. Um, there's only one sure way to... V- to win on valentine's this year and that is to win her heart all over again with a box of chocolates jesus christ how what is the reading level of the woman you're with that all it's going to cost is some chocolate covered strawberry tell a personal story relating to valentine's day well i think it's a complete bullshit holiday all right i resent the fact that there's some sort of pressure put on me that i'm supposed to fucking do something for her because there's no day that the lady has to do something for me all right so fuck you and your strawberries. You have to show some heart to win. And Sherry's Berries knows exactly how. Make sure to get it right this year with romantic, fresh, juicy berries from Sherry's Berries. To be honest with you, this is really all anybody deserves on a phony holiday is you just fucking click, click and shoot. There you go. You know, when she's not looking, you eat more than she does. Giant, freshly drip, dipped strawberries with Sherry's Berries starting at just 20 bucks. Oh, there you go. One twenty dollar bill. I'll throw that down. Over forty percent savings. And for my listeners and anybody else where they advertise in the universe, you can get double the berries for just ten bucks. Just go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in the code Burr. Uh, these strawberries are picked at the peak of freshness to ensure the best gift experience. Yeah, I was kidding. Who you yank them when they're still green and then they ripen on the truck? Dipped in white milk and dark chocolatey goodness, just like bananas. Uh, Top with chocolate chips, decorative swizzles, or nuts. Delivery is always guaranteed, even on Sunday. Here's the only way to get these amazing Valentine's Day uh, Day deal. Uh, Visit berries.com. Please spell out the word berries. B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Click on the microphone in the top right-hand corner of the page. Type in burr. Go to berries.com. Click on the microphone and a code. Uh, You must order today. Uh, Time is running out! Exclamation point. Look, if you want to get us some fucking chocolates, just get us some chocolates. You know what I mean? Um, you know what? I've actually waited too long. There's a fucking place in South Dakota that has like the best fucking Deadwood that has some of the most insane fucking chocolates you're ever going to get. You know, you could do that, but it's too late now. So just remember that for next year. Okay, guys, if you want to win our heart back. Uh, Pro Flowers, Valentine's Day is this weekend. Oh, God, here we go again. Only XX days away. I love how they think I'm going to do the math. 
Uh, six days away. I did it for you. Huh? Tired of guessing wrong what she wants each Valentine's Day? See, you see what's in that copy right there? Oh, you, she didn't like, you got her a gift and what? She didn't like it. So then what? She didn't blow you. Jesus Christ. Why doesn't she just crank one of those music grinders and you dance around with a little monkey hat on? This, this is, I, I don't like any of this shit. All right, Valentine's Day, Pro Flowers. And Pro Flowers, they're here to take the guesswork out of it. Yeah, in case you couldn't figure out getting her flowers. Uh, the Valentine's Day, trust the experts at Pro Flowers who give you the confidence that Valentine's Day is done right. Pro Flowers is offering my listeners and anybody else in the universe a dozen red roses plus a free vase, glass vase, and chocolates for just $29.99. Uh-oh, they're moving in on Sherry Barry's turf. Or really do it right and upgrade to the romantic long stem roses with a premium vase, chocolates, and a spa kit for night just night night just nine ninety nine. Sorry, go to proflowers.com and use my code burst. Sorry, I was just thinking is anything worse when a woman tries to be sexy and she isn't and she puts a long stem rose and she tries to do that Beyonce diva stomp over towards you. You know? She looks like she had some season in physical therapy. Uh, don't wait till this weekend. <laughs> Send them to her this week. When her co-workers gush over her gift, you know you did Valentine's Day right. Pro, Pro Flowers is quick, easy, and delivery for Valentine's Day is guaranteed. Pro Flowers are guaranteed the last seven days of your money back. It's a no-brainer. Like you give a shit after five days. Can't beat the price and convenience. Pro Flowers takes the care out of the detail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to proflowers.com. Click on the blue microphone in the top right-hand corner and type in Burr. B-U-R-R. That's proflowers.com. Click on the microphone and type in my code Burr. Flowers and chocolates. There you go. Shut your goddamn fucking cake hole for the next goddamn year. All right. I'll read the rest of these later. Um, Look at my face, I got you some flowers and a box of chocolate, and you won't blow me. What the fuck do I have to fucking do? All right, trash man, everybody. Hey, Billy Bubbles. Billy Bubbles in the rain. Um, I went to high school with a guy who picks up my trash. I get along with him, and I always wave, and sometimes if he's not rushing... I'll have a short conversation with them. Last week, I saw my neighbor yell at him. He wasn't, a, he wasn't a jerk back, but he wasn't a dick either. What? He wasn't a jerk back, but he wasn't a dick either? Later on that day, my neighbor came over and asked me if I'd make a statement about the issue that he harassed her. I saw the whole thing go down. He didn't harass her. She yelled at him for coming a day late during a week when a holiday pushed everything back a day in terms of sanitation pickup. Uh, what a cunt. She said that even without my statement, she's going to press charges and file a complaint. I'm going to call the t town or police and let them know what's going on. I'm so livid that she would ruin this guy's life. He's a great dude. Thoughts on how I should handle this. Should I report her for lying? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. And I would take time off from work to testify that she's a lying whore. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Who the fuck yells at a trash man? The service that they're providing, fuck her. Fuck her, dude. You know something? I would 100% do it, and I would, I would even fucking tell her that you're going to do it at some point. Not, not in the beginning, because you don't want to weaken his case. But I would do it without a doubt. And when the whole fucking thing goes away, I would let her know that you did that. And I would let her know what a small person you think she is. And that she's disgusting. And to stay away from you and anybody else that you love because she's subhuman. There. How was that? Dilemma. Dilemma. Dear Bill. Oh, what a fucking whore. You came a day late and then you harassed me. Gee, you know what? You know what, she, you know what I bet she does for a living? She sounds like a blogger. Always playing the fucking victim and always going down and just trying to get somebody in trouble and try and fuck over their, their ability, you know, to earn a living. What a fucking twat. It's another thing that I was looking up is uh, as beautiful as these states are, you know, that I've been going to, all of these states that people, you know, consider flyover states and fucking what the fuck goes on there? You know, just shitting all over them, even though they're absolutely gorgeous and there's great people out there is... Um, you know, just the, the drug use and that type of shit is really fucking bad. The heroin, man, everywhere I go is this fucking heroin problem. And they keep linking it back 
to these, uh, you know, people having an injury. I saw this on Real Sports. People have an injury, and then they get, like, whatever. They get the fucking, what is it, Percocets, Vicodin, I don't know what the fuck it is, Oxy and that shit. And then when that runs out, they still want that high, and heroin is cheaper. And it's just like, you know, once again, once again, you would think, you know, with all this shit of talking about terrorism, you know, and people doing shit to this country. For some reason, you can fuck with the food supply and you can get your own countrymen addicted to heroin. And as long as you got enough fucking money, nobody gives a shit. It's completely like, isn't that like an act of terrorism? Am I out of my fucking mind? How can you do that to fellow Americans? You're ruining people's lives. It's fucking brutal. But it's one of the reasons why I stay out of the politics shit. You know, every once in a while I look at the stuff and it just, I, I don't know. It's like overwhelmingly depressing. You know, like um, I saw something the other day on uh, for some reason, I was looking up Chelsea Clinton because I saw her on TV with Hillary and Hillary was giving a speech like. Right. And I was literally going like, there's no fucking way I can listen to that voice for four fucking years. I just can't. I am not against a woman being president whatsoever, but you cannot sound like somebody learning how to play a trumpet. I just, I don't give a shit. You could have all the answers to the fucking universe. There's no, you can't hear what she's saying. You know, <laughs> my dog's looking at me right now like, really? Um, so anyway, so I looked up and I was just going like, how old is she now? And when I started out in comedy, she was just a kid. And, um... You know, she was at that awkward age, and it was kind of this nice unwritten rule. You know, you didn't make fun of her. She was at a fucking awkward age, right? And I was like, what, was she like 12 or something like that? And uh, I went to go look it up, you know, how old she was. Found out she was in her 30s, which fucking blew my mind, even though obviously it was 20 years ago, right? But um, what killed me is what I saw was they had a stat on her wedding. Do you know her parents fucking threw her a $3 million wedding? Like, these politicians are so fucking dishonest, they don't even try to hide it. It's like, how the fuck could you afford a $3 million wedding? The most money either one of you ever made in public service was, was being president, which was 400 grand a fucking year. Dude, you make 400 fucking grand a year. They're going to whack you in half. You're going to maybe walk with 200. Right? Nowadays, probably less than that. Probably 195. Where the fuck are you getting off paying for a <laughs> fucking... You got a fucking $3 million wedding, a house on fucking Martha's Vineyard. Give me a fucking break. These cunts go around, right? I got another Hershey's kiss in my mouth, so you know I'm telling the truth. Um, these guys go around, they just give speeches. Him and his wife, 253 and a grand of fucking whack. Just giving speeches. Can you imagine paying 300 grand to listen to somebody for an hour ago? Right for a fucking hour And now you got sickly Clinton With that awful facelift that he got Which just made his head look fucking huge You know He's lost all that weight And he got a, he got a chin Whatever the fuck he did to his chin He yanked that fucker back He looked like a bobblehead version of himself And I'll tell you His shit's yanked back so tight He can't even clap anymore You know what I mean Either that or that's his true feelings about his wife, right? Which you can't blame. You really can't blame Bill Clinton for going out and taking a cigar and, and, and putting it in that woman. You know what I mean? If, like, that's what he's laying next to in bed. I mean, I, you know, Jesus Christ. If, if I was married to Hillary Clinton, she would have to have, you know, those, those surgical masks that Asian people wear when they get sick because they don't want to get anybody else sick because they're fucking courteous? Or because it's like nine zillion people that live next door. <laughs> it could turn into an epidemic. I don't fucking know why they do it, right? I would make her wear one of those all the time. Because maybe then she'd sound like a muted trumpet, right? And every once in a while, she'd, she'd hit a couple of notes that remind me of a Miles Davis song. And then maybe I could just stop myself from strangling her in the fucking Oval Office. You know? This reminds me like an animal that like is, is getting eaten alive. You know, you ever hear that? Like just like time I saw that fucking monkey eating that other monkey alive, just digging meat out of its back. And he's like, ah, 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 ah. 
you know, it's sort of a like not as sharp and not as quick as that. Um. Anyways, and then fucking that that Bernie Sanders guy with his fucking night. You, you look at you know you wonder why Bill Clinton got a fucking facelift, and then you 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 fucking you got his neck done. Then you look at Bernie Sanders, you're like, oh, that's why. Jesus Christ, he looks like a fucking he looks like a bloodhound eating a fucking turkey dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Jowls flopping all around. Who are you gonna fit with, Jer? Right? All of these guys. That Jer- Jersey guy looks all fat, and then everybody else just looks like an extra to me. Granted, I have not listened to one fucking word any of them have said, but it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Oh, really, Bill? You think it's going to be interesting? A presidential election that might pique your interest? You freckled, arrogant cunt. I want to thank everyone. Um, who came out in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I kept doing a Southern accent the entire time I was out there and I was addressing it, but uh, I don't know what Wyoming people sound like. Um, Cheyenne, Wyoming and Denver, Colorado. I went out with uh, Dean Del Rey and uh, we had a great fucking time. We played this, um, the Cheyenne Civic Center. How cool does that sound? Had all this amazing woodwork inside of it. That really looked like one of those log cabins that either an oil man or a fucking Hollywood starlet goes and buys. You know, like when people like get a huge amount of success pretending to be other people at some point, they have to get out of L.A. And they always end up in like Wyoming or Montana. It's fucking hilarious. And they buy a, what looks like a log cabin, sort of. It looks like a log cabin and like a fucking resort all at the same time. You know, and then they go out there and they buy their uh, designer, I'm a fucking cattle rancher wardrobe. And then they do the fucking interview, right, with their big stupid cowboy hat on. An older, wiser so-and-so steps back to uh, evaluate the last six years of a whirlwind, whatever the fuck it is, right? You know what I mean? And then they pretend that they can live this little fucking life out there before... They go nuts after three days and they call up a G5 to pick them up and take them right back, you know, and they end up back down the chateau. All right. The chateau maman Um, doing blow in a bungalow. That's what you do. You're finding a little bit of balance. Wyoming. Cheyenne, Wyoming. So I go there and, um, you know, this was the last of the, the 50 that I had to do. So, of course, I'm reading all up on Wyoming and all that type of stuff, and I see that Yellowstone Park is right in the north um, northwest corner of it, and I'm like, well, fuck, I got to go up there and go do a gig in the middle of nowhere at some point, and uh, maybe I'll do a nice run through Montana, Idaho, and all that shit, the Dakotas. Um, you know, I get into all that fucking nerdy shit, right? So we do the gig. We have a great time. I take some pictures with some people afterwards. And when I was on stage, I was saying, hey, where should we go tonight if I want to go out and have a pot, right? So, of course, everybody's yelling out everything at the same time, and I can't hear anything. So I'm like, one at a time, one at a time. And then just in the back, this guy yells out, the green door. Said to go to the green door, and then the whole crowd just goes, ah, oh. like, you know, don't go there. And I was like, I was like, I didn't even need you guys to say that. The green door just sounds like some creepy serial killer place. So I go, I'm not fucking going there. So then somebody said, I forget the fuck it was called, the Cadillac Lounge or something. I took a picture of it. So um, I, uh, I decide... You know, all right, that's where the fuck we'll go. We'll go over to this thing. I'm actually looking up the picture right now on my uh, on my phone here. Um, come on, come on. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. The Cadillac. Cadillac Ranch. Sorry. So we go in there. You know, there's a big American flag lit up on the side. I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's fucking go in there and see what this place is about. And we went in there. And I got to tell you, man, it was the most diverse group of fucking people I've ever seen in my life. And I think for the simple fact, there was no other place to go. So there was like a group of bikers. There was there was soldiers. Um, there was like ranchers. There was a group of lesbians, and then there was just filler people that you couldn't really tell what the fuck they were. They was older, younger, the whole fucking thing. So we're in there like, wow, man, look, this is fucking 
this is nuts. And then it had a real like cowboy kind of feel to it. Yet there was like a fucking DJ playing like modern music. It was this, it was fucked. So we're in there and Dean, for whatever fucking reason, is just pointing at shit and people going, look at that fucking guy. Look at this shit. Look at this fucking bar. And I'm sitting there going, Dean, stop pointing at shit. Stop pointing at shit. You know, and Dean's been sober for like 20 fucking years. So he's got no excuse. He just kept pointing at shit. Um, and then finally, you know, I had a, you know, I was talking to a couple of the people in there. I was talking to this guy that was in the middle of taking a two-year welding class, which, of course, was really interesting to me. I was talking to him about that shit. I was talking to some other people. And uh, then at one point, somebody said, hey, you want a, a whiskey? So, like, um, my thing now when I go on the road and I drink, I have a beer and a, and, a, and a whiskey or a scotch, and then that's it. I call it a fucking night. And it's been working out great for me. You know what I mean? So I have a nice little taste, but then I don't get hammered. And then I'm fine the next morning and I can work out and shit, right? So uh, this guy offers, you know, he comes over. Hey, you know, I got to buy a drink. I said, well, I'm just getting a beer. And I said, all right. Well, you know, I was going to get a whiskey too. He goes, what do you want? He goes, we got a local fucking Wyoming whiskey. I was like, all right. When in Cheyenne, let's fucking do it, right? So he gets me this fucking shot and he brings it over and it looked, it was almost like see-through. Now, I don't know if, if they did whiskey and water or what, but I fucking took a sip of it and it had no bite or anything. I was just looking at him like, dude, what the fuck is this? And he goes, he goes, well, it hasn't been aged at all. I got to tell you, dude, it was the worst whiskey I've ever had. And my apology to the person who bought me the shot, I, I couldn't finish it. I, look, I said, Dean, I go, look at this fucking thing. And Dean was just like, yeah, dude, that looks like piss. So, um, and then at that point I wasn't looking, but Dean was saying that the biker people were mean mugging everybody. And he goes, dude, let's get the fuck out of here. So we get out of there and, uh, oh, as we were driving over there, I noticed that there was a drive, there was a liquor store with a drive through. So I was like, oh God, I got to get a picture of that. So I get it. I pull over, I get a picture of it. And then I'm just like, dude, I got to do it. I got to go to a drive through liquor store. So I fucking pull up. We actually, I posted video of this and I just wanted to get one beer and the guy goes, well, I can give you like the 24 ounce. So I got like a Budweiser. Um, I'll repost the video on the, uh, the, the Monday morning podcast, Twitter page. So I went up, I ordered a fucking beer and what was really cool is it had the old fucking, remember the old air hoses when you would pull up at the, the, uh, the gas station and it, it would ring the bell like ding, ding as your, as your car pulled in. It was so fucking cool. And, um, we were sitting there and then this dude just sort of walked into the place or whatever and as we drive out there's an arby's across the street which i never fucking eat you know fucking fast food roast roast beef i mean i like to think i'm a courageous person but that's just a little that's that gets a little too shady for me right i'd rather eat the pink slime um so anyways uh delray's going like hey man he goes let's hit the arby's i'm hungry so i go all right so we go into the arby's right he ordered some shit, and then I ordered, like, some chicken sliders, which I shouldn't have fucking got. They were fucking disgusting. It was like eating the heel of some chick's fucking boot, boot, you know, just the way they were shaped, like clogs. They were just fucking gross. So um, we go around to the drive-thru, and this is right across from the drive-thru liquor store. And I look across the street, and I read the sign, and what does it say? It says the green door. So the drive through liquor store is part of this shady fucking titty bar called the Green Door that urban legend said that there was a one-legged stripper in. Now, the younger me would have been like, I got to go in and go see that shit. The older me goes like, oh, my God, that's somebody's daughter. So, um, so technically, I kind of did go to the Green Door. I didn't. I didn't go in there. I just fucking pulled up or whatever. So I'll, I'll, I'll post some pictures of that shit. Um, let me see if I actually took them. So... And then the next day we got up, right, and we wanted to go to some local place to get a uh, to get breakfast. And we went to this local place, and I don't know if the regular chef was out of town, but I ordered eggs over easy, and I cut into them, dude. They were so undercooked, like it came out clear, like the white part of the egg was still clear, like you know when those people drink like egg whites, it was like that. And so Dean's eggs were the same way. 
And uh, I just never sent food back. So I just stirred him in with the fucking hash. I mean, they should have just served the eggs in a glass like fucking Rocky Balboa. And I just suck it down. I noticed a woman diagonally from me. She sent her eggs back, too. And then in the end, when I went to uh, I went to pay, she was just like, how was it? And when I said it was great, I kind of stumbled. I went, it was good. It was great. And then she goes, and then she immediately looked up. She goes, was everything okay? Was everything okay? So <laughs> I'm just guessing that the, the normal chef was out of town. So I'm not going to out this place as being, a, uh, as being something bad. But uh, it was pretty rough. It was one of the worst breakfasts I've ever had. But uh, when, we, when we came back down, um, we were driving down to Denver. I literally feel like a little kid right now. Like I'm just telling you every moment of this fucking, this tour. But uh, Dean's a big motorcycle guy. He's been riding for 30 years. So they had this huge fucking Harley Davidson dealership right on the 25 as we were coming down. So we stopped in and I didn't know, but Harley has a new bike that's just right out of my childhood. It's called the 72 and it's got the big spoked front wheel. It's got the handlebars. It's like fucking Arthur Fonzarelli's bike, which obviously was fucking uh, from the, uh, you know, the 50s or whatever. But um, I haven't ridden in like a year and a half. And uh, I don't know, man. I think I got to ride that bike. I think I'm going to rent it just one day. There's a park up around where I'm at. I'll rent it on like a Sunday and just go up there in the morning time and just fucking ride it around and bring it back. I'm too much of a pussy to ride all the time because, uh, you know, I got too much to fucking lose. And... Um, Oh my God. They had one in, in this black and gold metal flake. It was fucking good. It's just perfect, man. As much as I love the Road King, like every wannabe motorcycle rider who watched a couple episodes of uh, whatever that fucking show was. What was that fucking show there that everybody watched about, about the bikes? Um, you know, like every fucking wannabe badass who doesn't have a tattoo and is not a motorcycle guy. Like Delray took a picture of me on the fucking 70, the 72. And I just started laughing. I was like, how much, how much am I not a motorcycle guy? Like, do you realize of what a fucking nerd you have to look like to sit on a Harley and still look like a fucking, to still look like somebody you could bully? (laughs) I look like, Every fucking just white dude having a midlife crisis that like, you know, who watched it. What is that fucking show? What is the fucking show that was all about the motorcycles that everybody watched? I never got into it. Um, God damn it. It's it's the perfect reference for this shit. But um, um, I want to thank everybody that came out. Cheyenne, Wyoming. uh, I know it was last second, but uh, I had a great time. I had a great time in your, your your state capital. Um, it was just a really, really cool fucking town. And I had a great time in the uh, Cadillac Ranch there. That sounds, I swear to God, like the fucking Bunny Ranch. It sounds like a fucking whorehouse, but it wasn't. Um, it was cool talking to the people there. And thank you to everybody, you know, that bought me a beer and a shot and all that shit. And thank you, everybody in Denver, by the way, which was just a fucking insane show. Um, that was another special one just because I'd done so many fucking gigs in Colorado. In the middle of nowhere, I always bring up Arapaho Community College. I'll never forget that nooner where they had me standing in an area where three hallways met right before class ended. That was a fucking nightmare next to a popcorn machine and five people scattered out about 40 chairs, empty chairs. All right. By the way, did I, I mention, uh, I told you guys earlier. Now, you know that I'm an old curmudgeon here, a middle-aged curmudgeon. I mean, I don't even know if I'm middle-aged at this point. 47 times 2 is 94. Not a lot of people get to 94. I'm an over-the-hill guy. Who's kidding who? Who can still bang out fucking 10 pull-ups? Huh? You like that? Dash, 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 dash. Um, <laughs> what am I saying here? Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm one of these fucking people that I do not give it up to young people right out of the fucking gate. I don't give a fuck how good a game you had. I don't give a fuck how good a season you have. I want to see the career. And, you know, that whole crown him king began somewhere at the beginning of Shaq's career. That that fucking, you know, when you came into the league and you already had your own fucking sneaker. You know what I mean? Um, So I never give it up to people until... Like, you know, and people going, Tom Brady's the greatest of all time. I, I still was going like, well, Joe Montana has four rings and it only took him four times to get it. He won with nobody's. 
He won with superstar teams. All right? So, until this guy does something above and beyond him, the best he can do is be on his level. I'm one of those guys. Having said that, Steph Curry is the greatest fucking shooter of all time. I believe. I already think that. So I made it uh, a promise as a sports fan that I was going to try and see him this year. Um, Well, see him as soon as I can while he's still fucking young and he's in his prime. You know, you got to do that. Like I saw Jordan when he still had hair. You know, so um, turns out I was hanging out at Lago last night doing uh, the great Tom Papa's show down there and Al Madrigal from All Things Comedy. The creative force, the brains, the brawn behind all things comedy. He was down there, and he's a, uh, he's a Bay Area guy, and he watches every single Golden State Warriors game. And he said, you know what? He goes, the Warriors are in town this Saturday. So I, uh, I woke up this morning. boop. I went on StubHub. And I paid through the fucking nose for two fucking great seats. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Saturday night. Fuck it. I got to see this guy, and I'm going to get there early for the shoot around. So, cause I want to see him put on a show and I'm hearing people talking about how fucking unreal it is just to watch the guy shoot around. And it's reminding me of when I went to a San Diego Padres game back in May of 1998. I remember me and this comedian, Dan Smith, another Boston guy, we went down there and it was, we saw Mark McGuire and this is when they, you know, this is when they were, uh, you know, going after the Roger Maris record, you know, and everybody was having Andrew Steen delivered to their house in their wife's name. I'm actually going to look it up. I'm going to find you the exact fucking date. San Diego Padres, 1998 schedule. That's fucking hilarious that this still exists. That's some who the fuck looked this up today. 1998 San Diego Padres schedule. I remember it was in May 20 something. Where the fuck was it? It was the Cardinals, right? This is some fucking... Ah, Jesus Christ. They have the games numbered rather than the date. You fuck... Oh, there's the date. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. Come on. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Ah, right there, Fred. Go fuck yourself. 529, 1998. Or 530 or 531. It wasn't June. I remember it wasn't June. I went to one of those fucking games against the St. Louis Cardinals, and we got there early, and we watched Mark McGuire take batting practice. And um, if there's any footage of that, if you could have been there and watched the performance this man put on, and you still think that performance-enhancing drugs should be illegal, you're out of your fucking mind. These people are special. These people are better than us. Okay, you know, when you take a Prius to the fucking gas station, do you put the fucking, do you put premium, super fucking the best gas? You don't, you give it the shit gas, right? Do you pull up in a fucking supercar? You give it, you put the best fuel in it that you can. All right, and you know what it is? I don't think it's these athletes' fault. I think it's the people in the crowd. We don't want to admit that we're just, well, you know what we are? We're a bunch of Toyota Priuses. That's what we are. <laughs> bunch of Ford Escorts, and we deserve that shit food that they feed us and fuel our bodies with as we sit there and just getting the itis in the fifth inning from all the booze and fucking hot dogs you ate. These fucking athletes, they're better than us, they're special. They need the high octane fuel and they should go out there and put on a fucking show and fill up our lives. Right? Anyways, I'll tell you right now, I would rather watch a fucking roided up athlete take batting practice than watch an all natural one break down at 35 and remind me that I'm going to die someday. You know what I mean? I want them to be superhuman. I want their head to be three times the size it was before they started their career. Fuck that. Those people, they're heroes. They're using themselves as guinea pigs. They put that shit in their body. They didn't know what the fuck it was. They didn't know what the fuck it was because they wanted to make you happy. They wanted to hear you cheer. Right? They wanted to see your little kid go, boy, oh boy, this is the greatest time ever. And then they wanted to go out and have their choice of pussy after the game. 
top shelf, high octane, fucking Victoria's Secret pussy, and they goddamn it, they earned it. All right, you walking around letting somebody shoot horse, horse tranquilizers into your fucking ass. You know, and then what do you get? What do you get? What do you get to, as, as a thank you? You got to sit in front of the Senate. They make you cry. If I was running this nation. No, I, I swear to God, they, they, I, I love that athletes use performance enhancing drugs, and I hope they continue to do it because as much as people are condemning it, we learn things by them using them, and eventually they're going to figure out how to make them safe. And when I'm old, when I'm old and you guys go to see me at a casino, when I am 94 and I am fucking jacked with a full head of fucking hair, you can thank the Mark McGuire's, okay? You can thank the fucking, uh, the other, whoever the fuck else took it. I don't know who the fuck, I don't know who gives a shit. You can thank Peyton Manning's wife. All right, if she didn't blow out her fucking shoulder taking those cookies out of the oven and she didn't need that shit, God damn it. Can somebody please make a picture of me at 94, jacked with a full head of hair, wearing a tuxedo, playing the Stardust, cheering on the Vegas... Oh, shut the fuck up, Bill. All right. Dilemma. Dilemma. Dear Bill, would you rather have to live in an air balloon for a month, never having set down, or would you rather live in a submarine, never breathing the surface for a whole month? Both scare the shit out of me for a whole month, but I think I choose the submarine. Seems more natural. Yeah, and there's also a bathroom. I wouldn't want to have to shit on people <laughs> and, and pee. Well, I would obviously wait till I was over a uh, rural area. Yeah, plus you'd, you'd be inside. You'd have a bed. If you, when you were in the submarine, you have a blanket, you know? You get to be down there with all the fellas. Hey! <laughs> Um, no, man. I mean, I think it would be cool to fucking look out the window and see all the fucking, uh, the sea life and all that shit. I would go fucking nuts down there, but, um, I don't know, fucking up there in an air balloon gets cold or hot. You're really dealing with the fucking elements when you're up there. It starts fucking raining. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, w I would be, uh, I would get over that really quickly. But I think being in a sub, you know, you're down there, you could play cards, you could fucking break each other's balls or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely, I would think I would much rather do a sub. Um, and if I had to die either way, I'd rather die in a sub. I'd rather have it just fucking, you know, if you're going to die in a sub, that's going to be quick. You know, it's just, it's just over, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes maybe it might not be quick. If they close that door. Yeah, those are two terrifying things. I got to go with you. Got to go with you on that. Um, all right, dilemma. Billy boy. Uh, if you had to choose which holiday to get canceled and never celebrate again, would you choose Valentine's Day or President's Day? Who deserves more recognition? Your girl for doing what you do all year without a holiday? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, we don't get a holiday. Um... Or maybe I read that wrong. Or presidents who may or may not be horrible people who hurt the country. I'd cancel President's Day because I'd rather keep the one that involved chocolate being around. Uh, that's a good reason for it. Uh, if I had to get rid of one, I don't think anybody really celebrates President's Day. I don't really consider it a day off. It's kind of like Flag Day. You know what I mean? Or uh, Buttermilk Pancakes Day. Isn't there one of those fucking days, too? Um. Jesus, you want me to cancel a holiday? Uh, I wouldn't cancel Valentine's Day just because women like it so much. Believe it or not, I am a cunt, but I'm not that fucking bad. So I, I'd keep that one. Yeah, you know what? Fuck President's Day. All those guys are bought and sold anyways. You've seen it with Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. You've seen how the Democrats are just going to pick her because she's going to play ball. They're all tied into the fucking... The fucking... I don't know what you want to call it. That she, that Bernie Sanders is too fucking radical. He's going to switch shit up too much, and then they're not going to work with them. Even if Bernie Sanders gets fucking elected, they're not going to work with them. They're going to show their fucking true colors. They're a bunch of, they're just a bunch of. They're all bought and paid for. They, they all. How the fuck do the Clintons got three million dollars to throw their kid a wedding? You know what I mean? 
Give me a fucking break. It's because you went out and you gave speeches to all the people that fucking financed your campaign and then you hooked them up and looked the other fucking way. I swear to God. I swear to God. Do you wonder how the fucking pharmaceutical companies and the people who fucked up the food supply are able to do it and there's, no, there's nothing behind it? It's because they fucking paid everybody off. I swear to God. All right, I'm on my, I'm on my, this is why I, I always vote for that third party guy. And everybody goes, oh, you're throwing away your fucking vote. How is throwing away my fucking vote voting for somebody who's a decent fucking human being? I swear to God, people, they, they, they don't want to try to do what's right. They just want to win. They want to be like, oh, my guy won. Oh, I'm on my stump again. See that? Every time I sit there and I trash people for fucking giving their public opinion, then look at me. Look at me. I do the exact same thing. I am what's known as a hypocrite. A hypocrite. This, uh, this past weekend on Saturday night when I got back, I went to a, uh, this music, music Cares event. And um, every year they honor somebody. And whoever they're honoring, everybody comes out and um, just does this person's music. So say they were honoring ACDC, a bunch of famous fucking musicians that are into ACDC would come out. And do all their songs and switch them up and do different versions of them. So it was Lionel Richie, right? Oh, what a feeling, right? So I go to this fucking thing and uh, it was unreal. It was like Lenny Kravis, Usher, who I couldn't believe how small he was. He fucking crushed it. Um, John Legend, Stevie Wonder. All right, all these monsters. And then Stevie Wonder. And I knew Dave Grohl was going to go on. And I'm like, how the fuck is Dave Grohl going to follow us? Is he going to play drums and sing? Is he going to do the come out with his blue guitar and sing? And he just went up and just sang a song. That was it. He told this fucking story about, you know, when he broke his leg. Remember, he fell off the stage. Well, he broke his leg. He was talking about all the outpouring from the fans and all that. And then one day he just got this giant fucking basket of muffins. The biggest basket, I guess, ever. This fucking giant thing. And there was no note or anything on it. And as he's telling this story, the, the, the band's sort of just playing, you know, some music underneath it. And he's telling this story. He's got people laughing, but they're listening and all that shit. And then like two days later, I guess he got a, he got a, uh, a call from his manager who said, yeah, uh, Lionel, Richie, Lionel Richie just called up to see if you got the fucking giant basket of muffins and then he just goes uh so i just you know i forget how we fucking ended the story i'm butchering it now right as he ends the story and you realize that it was lionel richie they kick into that his song you are and, he, and dave Grohl just crushed it you know that song you are the something you are the rain and he just was up there singing it fucking crushed it went on after stevie wonder and crushed it um so I, I got to I got to do that. You know what was funny was uh I I went down there and um you know I'm not a suit guy, but you had to wear like a shirt and tie, dude. And I swear to God, like I, I don't know. Just like me when I was on the motorcycle, when I, I had on that suit and tie, dude, I don't know what it was. Sometimes I look all right, but uh the thing about suits is if you if you you gotta buy them, like they go out of style really quick. And this one was like three, four years old. I just gotten it dry cleaned or some show the last time I wore it. And I put this fucking thing on and uh, I was talking to Nia. I was like, and I just kept going. I look like an asshole, right? Though? Like, she's like, no, you look fine. I go, yeah, I don't think so. Man. I, I look like an asshole. So the whole fucking night, um, you know, anytime I would walk into the bathroom, you know, it was a long fucking night. It was like a four hour fucking thing, you know? And uh, anytime I would go in there and I would wash my hands and I would just sit there and I would look at myself in the mirror. I just kept laughing what a fucking jerk off I look like. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't a good scene. You know? I don't like hating myself. It's not a good place for me to be. <laughs> I, say, I think it's time to retire that suit. Apple Fives, the FBI. Dear Big Brother Billy, what are your thoughts on the battle between Apple and the FBI regarding hacking into the, the phone's of the San Bernardino terrorists. Also, does the fact that the FBI has the phones for two months and can't get into them put a dent into any government overreach conspiracy theories? Uh, now, he says, the situation with Apple is FBI wants Apple to create an operating system that would allow for them to hack 
encryption on the phone. Uh, they would upload the system to the terrorist phone to allow them to unlock it. However, what? They would upload this system to the terrorist phone to allow them to unlock it. However, if Apple does this, the operating system can be used by the FBI and others to totally compromise any security on any iPhone in the future. Uh, the solution's simple. It's just like, just bring the phones to us and we'll hack into it. And whatever information you need on the phones, we'll do that for you. Yeah, once again, because of these terrorist cunts, what you're going to do is that you're going to allow all the, you know, these fucking lunatics at the top to take even more power and privacy away from you. And I could just, simplest way to tell you this is just like, you know, the, the amount of people out there can, that can actually handle power. Uh, is it's very rare. I mean, look in my business, okay? You see what happens, you know? Everybody's down to earth, everybody's cool, and all of a sudden you get your own sitcom, and next thing you know, you're banning people from the set, you're tipping shit over, and nobody's saying shit because you're making all this fucking money. You don't handle it well, right? Being like, being like in the top levels of government and security, it's the same fucking thing. I don't think they handle it well. I think it's way too much freedom. And I'm sick of people saying shit like, well, hey, man, if you're not doing anything, then what are you worried about? I'm worried about the fact that, you know, just, you know, we're human beings, dude. We're awful. We're fucking terrible people. We're, we're terrible with the amount of access that we have now. You don't need to give people more access. And I don't feel like, you know, they keep just hiding behind this whole fucking thing of like, you know, well, we're just going to use it for the bad people. It's like, yeah, but you get to decide who the fuck's bad. That Snowden guy, he had to walk away. What they were building was like the fucking Batman movie. They spy on their own fucking people. They're lunatics. I don't know what they do. I always picture them just sitting there fucking. I don't know. Like, dude, you know, like that Snowden guy, he says when he stays in a fucking hotel room, he unplugs the phone because they had that speaker phone. Do you know that down at the front desk, they can turn it on? And just listen to whatever you're doing in there, you know, fucking your lady talking to yourself, rubbing one out, uh, whatever the fuck you're doing in the privacy of your own fucking hotel. And they can just listen in on that shit. It's fucking it's just the whole thing is creepy. And um, yeah, no, it's it, I can't imagine, you know, what by the time, you know, if I live, you know, to be like 90, 100 years old, like I would like to. Um, I want to see the fucking, I want to live in every fucking decade. You know, I want to get to the sixties again. I was born in 1968. I want to make it, you know, I just keep thinking shit like that. I want to make it right. So, um, I can't imagine like the lack of privacy that there'll be if, if you live that long, just with like people with like drones and shit like that, like the cameras and just how, like, I think in the future, right. They're going to make, they're going to have like these, uh, like microchips, like misters, you know, and like somebody walks by and somebody just hits you with a little mist and all these little microchips go on you. And when you shower, like most of them come off, but like a few will still stick on you. And then your next door neighbor can just watch your whole fucking life. There'll be no more TV shows. We'll just be spying on each other. I don't know. I think it's all fucking creepy, and I think that's way too much. I don't think the FBI needs to fucking do that. I think Apple should work with the FBI, and uh, if there's ever, like, somebody that they want to fucking check in on, you know, let them do it. Say I'm call them up. What else did I want to talk about here in this thing? Oh, my God. I lost my shit. I've been doing so well with my temper lately. You wouldn't know it from this podcast, but, oh, Billy's been making some strides. Um, I don't know what happened. About a month ago... I started to flip out when I was in the car. No, I was at an airport. That's right. Car, airport. When you get to my age, it's all the same thing. It's some form of transportation. Whether you're in it or standing, trying to get on it, it's all, like, it just sort of all blends into one thing. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, it's Christmas again. That's what getting old is. All right? You don't know where you are, and all of a sudden, it's Christmas again. That's basically what you have to look forward to. All right? So, with that depressing thought, let's plow forward. So, we're in this... We're at the airport, and I went to the sky cap, you know, rather than going to the fucking electronic faceless cunt thing that I'm supposed to, you know, that can't read my 
credit card and all of that horse shit. And there's like one person to help 70 people on these things. I go to this fucking guy and uh, he ends up shooting the shit with somebody else. He takes for fucking ever. And I was starting to lose my shit as I do. As I do. I don't have control of my emotions. My emotions have control of me. Um, my wife just tapped me and she just goes, give it a minute. That's all she said. Give it a minute. And for some reason, I don't know why, that is just stuck in my head. And as I, you know, more times than not, when I start to flip out, I just think, give it a minute. Take a breath. Just give it a minute. And it's been really fucking working for me about, you know, 11% of the time, Um, which is, you know, whatever, you know, I'm 11% better. So last night, I get in the car. It's fucking raining out here. So you know the deal. It starts to rain out here. Everybody freaks the fuck out because, you know, they're not used to... I don't know what the deal is. I guess there's a bunch of fluids from cars just build up and it doesn't get washed away. So, yeah, I guess the roads are a little more slippery. But anyways, so I'm driving to pick my wife up, right? And I'm at this red light and I'm the third person in line at the red light. Okay, so when you're the third person in line to make a left in Los Angeles, your eyes are fucking locked in on the movements of the person who's in the pole position. And you need that fucker to make a move. Okay, take a little bit of risk or you're not going to make the light. Okay, so I'm just sitting there locked in on that thing like my fucking pit bull when it hears a noise at the front door and its fucking ears goes up and it starts going. Right. And it's fucking hair. That's that's the fucking mode I'm in. And do you know, I watched this stupid L.A. cunt. All right. Or whatever. Transplant. I'm not going to blame the city here. Goes to make a left. Stops. OK. Stops. There's somebody in the crosswalk. So the person stops. Okay, and then the traffic that's trying to drive through, one person is making a right where that person's making the left. So they're waiting for the person to crosswalk, and the other person is trying to make a left. So this person is not blocking because both people are turning. One's turning on the same street as the fucking lefty cunt, and the other one's going the other direction. Do you know, for whatever fucking reason, this asshole, like... I don't know what they did. They just, the person got through the crosswalk and then rather than going, I, I, and I'm like three cars back going, just go, fucking go. You know what they did? You're never going to guess. They backed up and got back in line. Backed up in fucking, what was it, 2007? Nine years. Coming up on nine years of living out here. That is the most fucked up moron move i've ever seen and you want to talk about not giving it a minute and absolutely losing your shit i i literally was in the car and went you fucking fucking and then said the word that isn't acceptable now anymore it used to mean you're a jerk um (laughs) and also begins with an f And then what I did was, you know, it was funny right after I did that because I yelled and I had to do a show. I reached into my console and I put a lodge in in my mouth (laughs) and I immediately laughed at myself and saw how ridiculous I was being. Um, I really wish I could control my emotions more. Um, I've never noticed because I grew around. I grew up around a bunch of fucking hotheads and I never realized like it's finally dawning on me as I approach the fucking half century mark. Um, it's it's finally dawning on me uh, what a weakness that is. Yeah, I I know, I, and because it's just dawning on me now, I can't really articulate it. It's one of those those uh, one of those moments. I'm trying to think of the Hollywood movie I've seen where somebody just gets caught up in their own fucking power and then halfway through it they're like wait but we're the victims right we're what the fuck movie was that oh shit it was this great movie where this guy was getting picked on and then he just took fucking control and then he started abusing his power and then the end he just sort of kind of dawned on him that wait a minute i would i i'm right right 
as he's, he's seeing the fucking hurt that he caused other people. And I want to say he blows his brains out. Ah, Jesus Christ, Bill. You know, I swear to God, if I had a dollar for every fucking movie I lost, I forgot, you know. I'd have a good 250 bucks. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm checking in on ya. I'm just checking in on you. How are you? How's your week going? I hope you're uh I hope you're accomplishing things. I hope you have a sense of purpose. I hope that uh that fucking douche with the bad breath and the fucking terminal head cold, that cunt doesn't walk by your cubicle today, you know? You hear him fucking <laughs> coming down the fucking hall. Um anyways, I am in a uh, I'm in a great mood, believe it or not. I just, uh, I finally got, I tell you guys this, I, you know, I was trying to take the, uh, the old timey door locks out of my old timey doors, my old timey fucking house, which by the way, I had an architect come over here. I was going to do it right this time, you know, for the whole fucking idea that I was going to have to make a drum room in my garage or whatever. And you know, the whole thing went to shit. And I'm not going to tell you why, because I don't need the fucking hassle, man. But I just, I found out the fucking history of this house. And, um, you know, uh, I, I didn't want to get into it. <laughs> I don't even want to get into it. So just, you know, fuck it. Just forget it. I had a dream and it went in the shitter. Um, is it? I swear to God. I'm I'm in with this fucking house. There's no turning back. So, anyways, I'm just I'm just putting my head down and I'm fixing every fucking goddamn thing in this fucking house that was painted over, jerry rigged, not done with the fucking I don't know who built a fucking mailman built half this fucking house. So, anyways, I got these uh, these old door locks, and of course, some douche paid this other douche to come in here and he just painted over everything, or she did. Okay. I don't want to be branded a sexist here, okay? A woman is just as good with the paintbrush as a man is, if not better. There are certain studies on uh, scratchmytwat.com that actually indicate that a female... Um, <coughs> so I finally, got the, uh, I finally got the door locks out of my door, and I brought them down to the old fella down the street, the locksmith guy, and I gave him three. Two of which were original, and none, another one was a newer, like, Home Depot-style one. So he goes, this new Home Depot one I can't make a skeleton key for. It's a big fucking pain in the ass. I think I have an older lock from the same era as your other lock. So I said, well, okay, let's do that. And I was like, all right, well, give me a shout when you, when you get these things done. And I said, you know, preferably one key wouldn't be able to match all of them, like a skeleton key. And can I also get one of those cool-looking skeleton keys? Instead of some modern looking key. And he goes, oh, absolutely. He goes, that's the only key that'll work. And guess who fucking called me right before I sat down? Two days later. Two days later, this guy called back. He has the locks fixed and all that shit. So now in my office, there's, uh, you know, I got two little closets. I can lock both those doors and I can lock the main door. And then the, when you go into the bathroom, um, you can... Uh, that one I had fixed last year, so they'll all fucking work. You know, you know what I love about it is Nia was giving me shit going like, what the fuck are you pulling all the doors apart, you know? And I tried to tell her, and she just kept going, you're not a locksmith. <laughs> she just kept giving me shit, going, you're going to fuck up the house. I go, no, what I'm going to do? And she kept going, you're not a locksmith. Um, and then just was openly laughing at me. Um as she does, which, of course, made me laugh at myself. But I got these fuckers out um, by, of course, going on YouTube and learning how to you know, get these things off without stripping the, uh, the screws and all that. I found this great YouTube video where this guy goes, all right, you just stick the screwdriver in there and you give just a little bit of pressure and then you just sort of tap it lightly with the hammer. You know, and that loosens up the paint, and then eventually you're able to turn the thing. And God damn it, if it didn't work, it worked on all of them except the ones that I stripped from being too fucking impatient. So I have a bit of a problem on a couple of doors. But anyways, um, 
I got three of them down in this room, and I got about another five to go. And then, unfortunately, uh, there's another couple of doors that, um, you know, were replaced with those awful Home Depot ones. So I'd like to get some newer ones. And I know what you're thinking, like, Jesus Christ, Bill, what's with all the doors in your house? Old houses had a lot of doors, not a lot of square footage, not a lot of big closets or anything, but the, God damn it, they had a lot of doors. And despite the fact that everybody back then seemed to own maybe one suit that you got married in and, you know, buried your friends in and all of that shit, like for some reason they had an unbelievable urge to lock things up. You know? I wonder what they had back then. Maybe they were panning for gold and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you would have of value back then, right? Everybody walking around looking like Johnny Appleseed. Why do they have so many dogs? All right, global warming scam. Um, all right. Global warming scam. Okay, this is like a, something that people keep sending me. Um, and they keep sending it to me as if my opinion has any sort of scientific background. Uh, I'm just basing it on scientists. <laughs> That's all I'm basing it on. And that fucking two and a half times the size of Texas and two miles deep swirl of garbage in the fucking Pacific Ocean. And that how just about every fish has a, some degree of plastic in their fucking system. Uh, okay, but even but none of that has to do with temperature. Love your show. It's really refreshing to hear someone in show business actually talk about some very important social pertinent things. When the fuck do I ever do that? Like what, football? Three-toed sloths? Flopping your dick on the bar? This, these are important to you? Um, I agree with everything you talk about on your show. I don't need you to. He goes, except, or she says, he or she, except global warming. The global warming scam is another system of control. I agree we should stop using oil and coal. These carbon sources are highly polluting and release toxins and mercury into the biosphere, but this has nothing to do with global warming. I know you love documentaries. Ah, God, can, can you guys just stop being a... Maybe I'm taking it in a cunty way. I know you love documentaries. God knows you don't read. Ah, he's probably right. Uh, look up global warming swindle on YouTube. A little taste into global war the global warming rat hole. There's a ton of other information on the web that exposes this bullshit scam. Good luck and looking forward to hear what you have to say about this. See, I don't get that. I'm supposed to just look up a bunch of shit that all agrees with the other side and then the other side's wrong? That's like me saying to you, look up all this shit about global warming and how we're affecting the climate. And I'm looking forward to see what you have to say. Um, I would think that uh, the fact that in France, all the leaders of the world just got together with all these scientists and all that. And even on the right, they have been saying it's bullshit from day one. From day one, they were saying it's fucking bullshit. Um, even they finally came out and they said, yeah, it's, we are affecting it. And then they were like, but it's too late to do anything now. Like that's what they came out with. So why would they be doing that? Why would they, why would, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that they're doing it to try to control us. That's such a long way to go, isn't it? Can't they just control us by scaring the shit out of us? The normal way? Like, oh, there's this group of people that doesn't have planes or a boat, and they're coming over here to get us. Like they've been doing for 15 fucking years. Can't they just do that? Um, I'll watch those things, but I, w I would like to know who paid for those, who financed those documentaries. Because if they're companies that are getting attacked for it, you know, there's obviously you know, getting attacked for the pollutants that they're putting into the atmosphere, then, you know, they could be going, well, we need to get this off of us by putting the real information out there. But generally speaking, I, I, as a rule, I don't believe corporations. I just don't. People in general. I mean, I'm full of shit, right? Why the fuck would I believe? Uh, I'll watch it. You know what? I you know what? This is the thing. I actually hope you're right. Because then I can have a lot less guilt and just go out and buy some fucking... Goddamn V8, man. Get out there and fucking drive around, do some donuts. 
Uh, P.S. Global warming carbon credits are controlled by the same crooked bankers that are fucking up the world economy. Well, I kind of think like the bankers, don't they control everything? They kind of own everything, right? Are we still making payments on the White House? Do they have to refinance that? I know it burned down in the 1800s. Who knows? You know, it's kind of a weird one is when a song you like gets in your head and then you don't mind and then you drive everybody nuts around you. Like, uh, um, Steve Gorman from Steve Gorman Sports sent me this, this link to this, uh, this country star that's been, um, that's been struggling for a long, long time. And he finally got a big break. I believe he's a distant cousin of Roy Clark. I'm not sure, but his name is Wheeler Walker Jr. And, uh, he sent me a clip that I'll send you guys. Uh, it's a great fucking song for Valentine's day. If you're not in a relationship for a man or a woman and, uh, the hook has just been stuck in my head. And I really want to sing it to you, but it's going to ruin it for you. So go look up uh, Wheeler Walker Jr. Uh, Well, I guess the song kind of ruins it. It's called uh, Fuck You, Bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And it's really catchy. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's it's, it's kind of poetic. I really think the, uh, the chorus really sums up what you feel when somebody breaks your heart. So, um, you know. Country music, those country music stars, they can do that to you every once in a while. And it's nice to see someone go to the left. You know, those fucking country singers, those, those poor bastards, for all these fucking years, you know, they've been abusing drugs and, you know, going to clan meetings and uh, beating the shit out of their women. But when they get on TV, they got to do that family values thing. You know, they got to get, I just want to thank Jesus, and I'm just, I just feel blessed, y'all, just, just take me into your hearts, you know, hey, y'all, you want, you want some potato salad, that stupid, phony, fucking southern thing, where if you're from up north, the first time you see it, you, your heart melts when you hear that twang, and you just think that they're the nicest fucking person, nobody can stick the fucking knife in your back. Like a fucking southerner with that fucking, hey, y'all, don't you, you know, I'm just fucking, they downplay it, they play dumb, but blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, you're laying in a fucking pig trough about ready to get fucking eaten alive. That's how it goes down. All right, and that guy from fucking 50 snatches and 40 smoking barrels, that's where he got it from. Okay, trusting water. Hey, Billy Filterface. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, don't trust drinking water. I don't trust drinking water. He goes, my friends think I'm nuts. They always point to the fact that public drinking water is tested time and time again. Now this Flint, Michigan fiasco, uh, it surfaced that officials lied about testing, did slow drip tests from faucets in order to get lower levels of whatever horse shit shouldn't have been there to begin with, and even wrote it off because most complaints weren't, were coming from minorities. Dude, how do you do that and go to sleep at night? How do you do that? How do those companies that do that fracking? And I'm not saying, I don't know anything about fracking, but you know, I've seen that in some cases it's fucked up the drinking water. How do you not go, oh my God, we fucked up. What do we do here? Oh my God, we like so fucked up. I'm the worst. But I'm just, how, do you, how do you, I don't know. I don't know how you fuck you do that. The best water comes in glass and is fresh from a natural spring that doesn't neighbor a Dow chemical plant. I stick to this as much as possible. I know I'm not nuts. I saw a civil action with John Travolta in the theater once. I saw oh, a civil, about 20 years ago, and it's haunted me since. What's your level of trust when it comes to, to water, and what kind of water do you drink? Thanks for the Thursday podcast. Love the music. Uh, that's Andrew Themelis. Um, go, check, go check in on yourself. All right. Uh, I don't know. I, what is my feelings on it? Um, yeah, it's probably a scam or whatever. I, I really feel that like, I try to be as healthy as I can. I have this weird thing where, you know, I'm trying to be healthy and live as long as I can while I also feel that, like, most people on earth dying would be a great thing. Because um, I just think we're, yeah, we're just putting too much stress on all the, on the natural resources. I believe that. Personally, I do. Now, have I read enough? No. Do I know what I'm talking about? No. It's just what I, I do what you guys do. I, I get a little bit of information and I just run with it in my brain. Um, and then someone reprimands me on fucking Twitter. <laughs> do your homework, man. Um, I actually had an acting gig with one person one time and they, they, 
they actually got their water delivered. Um, and rather than being in those giant plastic fucking things that you got to tip upside down, they actually were in glass, um, which who, any, anything tastes better in a glass. It always does. Beer in a bottle tastes better than beer in a can. Personally, I feel it does. Um, but as far as where they get the water, I don't think it matters as long as they fucking treat it, right? Does it? I, it can't, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I have no idea. I try to drink water as much as I can when I'm not fucking boozing. But uh, no, I don't have any faith in anything anymore. I, I don't. I went to this little fancy fucking pet store today to get my dog some food. And they were like, are you in our system? And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they go, okay, just so you know, whenever you want to be in the system, well, you get a 5% discount every time. And I just want to be like, yeah, and what do you get out of it? What do you get out of it? You know, you sell my fucking information to somebody and they always go, well, no, we don't. Well, I know you don't. Why would you do that? Why would you just give me a 5% fucking discount forever? That means you're either marking the shit up. There's no fucking way. Nobody goes out of their way to fucking make 5% less on some shit. You know, forever. I could say, hey, we're having a sale. You get people in there. And, hey, they kind of get used to going to the store and then you phase it out. You get 5% off every fucking time. You know? I think being a paranoid cunt works. It really does. Except sometimes in relationships it isn't. I said, who is he? He was just a guy at the post office. I gave him the mail. Nobody can fucking hiss like a goddamn reptile, man. You ever go to those alligator farms when you're down in Florida? You know what I mean? And you, first of all, you're looking at the people who go in there, and you're like, dude, half of these people have murdered somebody and fed their victim to one of these fucking things. I mean, just Florida is just, especially in the northern part of Florida, I mean, it just gets really fucking shady. Um, but when you hear those fucking things, when they hiss at each other, Jesus Christ. I mean, it just taps into back, I think that's just shit that's left over from when you were a caveman. You know what I mean? Like, just like, I can't even explain that. Like when I went, I was, where the fuck was I? I can't remember. I went to a classic one too. I think it was just outside of Tampa. No, maybe not. It was right up the road in in Miami or just south. It's that one that has the alligator mouth that you you walk right into, right? And I heard that thing fucking hiss. And dude, from that tip of my head to the end of my toe, tip of my toes to the top of my head, I fucked that up. It just went just fucking like, I can't explain the feeling. Just that, that feeling when you lean back in a chair and you almost fall. Like my entire body did that. And the thing was way far away from me. And I knew logically that it couldn't get to me. But I still think that from all those years of when we just walked around living in caves, that your body's just still trained that if, if it hears that fucking noise. That reminds me when I saw this three-toed sloth one time. I was in... Uh, Costa Rica, right? And we were taking this zip line tour. Um, it was like the most northern tip of, of the fucking rainforest. And the guide, you know, these fucking trees were unbelievable. It was like we were like, it felt like we were 150 feet in the air. And we weren't even mid-tree. You looked up, it was like another 300 feet above you. It was fucking unbelievable. It was a, uh, other than the fact that we were there, you know, doing a zip line tour and shit and had cell phones and stuff it was a fucking paradise so this guy did it every day so he knew where this three-toed sloth was and he looked up and he made this noise of uh i forget what the bird is called it's not an albatross but it does begin with an a and has a giant wingspan and they're not even in that area anymore because we killed all of them but to this day he imitates and the second he fucking imitated the thing the fucking three-toed sloth just like got up and started fucking looking around and then looked down at us like dude what the fuck you know, just be like, dude, don't do that. It's not funny. Right. Because I guess those birds are so fucking big that they would swoop down into the trees and with their talons, they would just fucking just basically grab these fucking monkeys and just yank them out of the tree and you're just completely fucked. Jesus Christ, those poor things, man. What a fucking way to go. Can you imagine me in that fucking slow? Actually, I can't. I'm a classic white guy. I can't jump, can't fucking run fast. None of that shit. Right. Um, doesn't understand dancing um, by men anyways um, <laughs> um, 
I don't even care if you're good at it. I don't even care if you're good at it. I just don't get it. It just makes me laugh. When I see a man dancing, it just makes me fucking laugh. I'm sorry. It's really immature, and I, and I need to grow up when it comes to that, but I'm, I'm just being honest. So anyways, I just can't imagine being that fucking thing. Like, as slow and as fucking awful as I am, I just can't imagine if there was... Can you imagine if there was just some giant bird and you were on its fucking menu and you lived outside in fucking trees where birds are? Jesus fucking Christ. And the amount of times you're just sitting there as a three-toed sloth, just chilling, talking to a buddy of yours, going like, hey, man, what do you think in the next couple of days? Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we could uh, go to that branch over there. And your buddy's sitting there talking to you, being like, oh, man, maybe, uh, maybe like, uh, maybe like next Thursday, next Thursday, and all of a sudden, ah! and this fucking thing just grabs your friend. <laughs> And, and, and you think your friend is just fucking gone. Just gone. You just see him disappear. No! Whatever monkeys do. <laughs> and then you're fucking sitting there. Like, what the fuck? Right? Your heart racing like you just did some blow, but you only got the speed of a fucking three-toed sloth. And you just sit there with the other three-toed sloth doing what? Just looking at each other like, you know, thank God that wasn't me, but what the fuck? Please make it quick. Just fucking just slice the thing's neck already. Sorry, man. I just had a lot of empathy when I saw that. The way the fuck it, it's almost like you had to see the fucking thing's face. When he made that noise, when he fucking looked around and then looked down and saw that it was us, you should have seen the look on this fucking thing's face. It was just like, I swear to God, if it could have shit on us, it would have. And you know what? We would have deserved it. Well, at least the guy who did it would have. Um, all right, enough about three toes. All right, germaphobe. Bill the... I can't... I don't know. Leukocyte? What the fuck does that word? I gotta look that word up. Is that some fucking space shit? Is that a... Uh, I don't know what that means. I, I feel like half the podcast is laughing at me and the other half is pretend, pretending like they know what the fuck it means. Leukocytes. A colorless cell... <laughs> That circulates in the blood and bodily fluids and is involved in counteracting foreign substances and diseases. It's a, I'm a white cell. Dude, that's that. You didn't realize how fucking original that is? I hope I said the word right. Jesus Christ, that was fucking brilliant. My hat's off to you. And it also ties in with germaphobe. You know, whenever you get sick, your white cell count goes up. Do you realize on how many fucking levels that insult is working? Jesus Christ, tip of the hat to you. All right, a few days ago, I was stretching in the gym with the girl I was dating. She picked up her phone from a bench, looked at the screen and said, God, my screen is so dirty, and then proceeded to use her tongue to lick the phone screen and wipe it off with her sleeve. What the fuck? Gee, just when you thought getting high with your gay friend and he goes for your dick in your truck was the fucking weirdest, almost uncomfortable thing you were going to... Jesus. He goes, I dry heaved and she got mad at me claiming that she was a medical student and done things like that. Doing things like that was good for, for my immune system. Fucking med students always got to tell you they are med students. <laughs> He goes, I couldn't get over it. I had to get away from her. Now it's in my psyche that maybe I am a germaphobe. When I use an ATM or debit card pin pad, I always have to wash my hand. Touching those things grosses me out. Am I a germaphobe? P.S. How many hands do you shake a day? Um, no, dude. Your girlfriend is a med student, but she's also gross. That's fucking disgusting. That's fucking disgusting. Period. Okay? There's so many other ways where you can... Exp just going to the fucking gym is enough to keep your immune system up. You don't need to lick your phone, you fucking pig. Disgusting. That's fucking gross. All right? End of story. No, you're not a germaphobe. You're an intelligent human being that's... In, you know, you're just aware. Yeah, I don't like touching those fucking things. When I go to the airport, I gotta, like, I gotta get on that little shuttle bus thing, and they're like, hold on before the fucking thing starts. I always pull down the sleeve of my jacket... 
And I hold on to it like that. Yeah, I, I don't need fecal matter and mucus and jizz and God knows what else is fucking on that thing. All right? Gross. You're not a germaphobe. All right, how many hands do I shake a day? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes zero. Sometimes uh, if I do a... Sh- I, don't, I don't fucking know. I, I know, but I, I go and I wash my hands afterwards. And I don't touch my face after I do it because I'm afraid I'm going to get pink eye. But uh, I don't shake a lot of hands. Um, but I will say, people love coming out of the bathroom and then be like, Hey, Bill! And then shaking your hands. I, I, I really got to, in the moment, get better and be like, Dude... No, you just came out. Come on, give me the elbow, dude. You just came out of the bathroom. I don't know you. I don't know if you're good at washing your hands. I want to know you like that. All right. Dilemma. Hey, Bill. Oh, that reminds me a long time ago. I worked the uh, improv in Dallas, and I pissed off this fucking old... I think I pissed off this older Texan guy. Or maybe this was his weird idea of humor. He came up and shook my hand right at the end of the show. I said, hey, man, thanks for coming out. And he just goes, I just paid. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm not going to do anything with my hand. My hand is, you could have your urine on it. It's fine. I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to shake a bunch of other hands now. (laughs) And they're going to have your pee on it. And then I'm going to wash my hands and it's going to be over. You know what I mean? You don't think you got, you just went into the bathroom. You don't have any idea what's on your fucking hands. Um, That's now on my hands. Yeah, we're all filthy. How the fuck did Sean Penn interview that drug lord? How do you do something like that and the government isn't like, hey, you know, we're trying to find that guy. You know, and you're sitting there palling around with them. Probably bought him like Fast Times at Ridgemont High DVDs, right, for his underground lair. <laughs> Dude, I love Sean Penn as an actor, but how out of your fucking tree are you that you're going to go and interview that fucking guy? You know, I, I did. That's I'm trying to think how many fucking stand up specials I would have to put out before I could go. I would go fucking interview somebody in like I, the well, I guess ISIS is actually fight, but we're fucking with them, too. You know, I would just think I'm going to walk in there with my microphone. They're all going to laugh at me and then they're going to saw my fucking head off or even worse, tie me to a chair. Fucking torture me to death. That's insane. Hey, good on him. Also, I don't understand. Is it El Chapo? That's his name. He sounds like such a gentleman, huh? El Che. He's a good chap. El Chapo. Um, I don't fucking get it, man. What are you doing? Why? Why did he go down there and interview that guy? And like, how 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 well does Sean Penn's movies do? That drug dealers on the run. He's on the run from our government, right? Isn't this the guy who escaped? I don't fucking know. You know what's going on is my fucking internet won't let me sign on. So I can't fucking see anything. I can't see the fucking highlights. Nothing. You know, all I'm up here is I fucking got one goddamn channel and a bunch of Tim Horton fucking commercials, which is their Dunkin' Donuts. See if I can sign on here. Isn't El Chapo the guy that like, that we would, that keeps escaping from jail? Is that the guy? El Chapo, come on, man. Come on. Ah, this connection is untrusted. Yeah, Jesus Christ. It's probably some psycho from Alberta trying to hack in here. That seems like they're Texas to me when you're up here. It's all fucking oil men and ranchers and shit. Um, and then you got Edmonton. Edmonton seems like it's nice. You know what I mean? Like that's their like business hub. You know, I'm totally judging these just by doing like driving through and, and doing a little bit of stand up out here. Like when I did stand up in Calgary, great people, but fucking animals. Jesus fucking Christ. They were animals. I don't know. It's because the place that we performed at, there was like no carpeting or nothing. They were fucking. I think it was also because it was bring your own beer. Fucking animals. I would never fuck with anybody from Calgary. I saw the way they behaved when they were in a good mood, ex- excited for a show. Don't ever fuck with anybody from Calgary. <laughs> I went to Edmonton. It was civilized. Calgary. Jesus Christ. They had everything but a hooker swinging from a swing. You know, back in the old days with the saloons, we had the horse, you know, way overdressed. 
Once again, it might just be a fucking movie thing. So much, so much of my history is, is, is based on that. By the way, I can't get on the fucking internet, but for some reason, I can fucking, uh, I can do it over the, uh, I can do it on my phone. Let me look up El Chapo here. Like I said, he sounds like such a chap. I just think like that English thing. Yeah, hey, El Chapo. He's a Mexican chap. How Mexico secretly launched a crackdown after Penn met El Chapo. How El Chapo was finally captured again. That was one day ago. Will El Chapo rat out rival cartels, corrupt officials? It's got to be a lot of stress being this El Chapo guy, huh? Joaquin Guzman. You know, I got to say, he looks like a Mexican Robert Blake, like during the Beretta years. Now when he says, uh, yeah, that's me who's also on the phone and then starts laughing. How else? Ch- this is when you know you lived a fucking crazy life. This is just the front page of this guy's, fu- if you search this guy's name. How El Chapo was finally captured again. Will El Chapo, oh, I read those. Uh, El Chapo Guzman. Sean Penn talks about him. El Chapo had erectile dysfunction surgery while on the run. Well, that's nice to know he took a pit stop, you know. Guy takes care of himself. How nervous was that doctor working on that maniac's dick? Uh, El Chapo speaks, Rolling Stone. Sean Penn has terrible regret about meeting El Chapo. Well, what did he think he was going to (laughs) meet? He's going to get some fucking Sherry's Berries? The hunt for El Chapo. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the truth about the jailbreak. There's nothing here about uh, an older, wiser El Chapo puts out a little singer-songwriter. Jesus fucking Christ. Dude, you don't realize how fucking finished we are? Just as, as, a, as, as, a, just as a race. Not as a race. As humanity. That's what I'm trying to say. Just as people. We're fucking done. You know, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone this month has Sean Penn talking to El Chapo. And Leonardo DiCaprio's on the cunt cover. And they're billing him. He has a plan to save the planet. <laughs> what are we doing? What the fuck is our government not doing? That A-list fucking uh, actors have to talk to drug lords and try to save the planet. I mean, there's got to be how many leaks are in the fucking dam at this point? I don't know about you guys. That does not make me feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Boomer Esiason to uh, figure out how to co- uh, fucking colonize mars that's the next thing that they're gonna have in the rolling rolling stone you know what I mean? why, why the fuck do i want to hear that can i hear a scientist you know how about have a navy seal interview el chapo i don't know bill how about you shut the fuck up all right i will i don't know i get unsettled i get unsettled then i then i have problems with digestion um I can't even remember what the fuck I was going to look up. What was I initially looking up before I got to El Chapo? Jesus Christ, some of the stories on that guy. You know, it's right up there with that fucking Rod Stewart rumor from way back in the day. Remember that one? I think it was, I can't even remember Rod Stewart. Yeah, they found like a gallon of jizz in his stomach. His stomach had to be pumped. You know, a gallon. <laughs> He went to Trader Joe's and bought some uh, fucking all-natural, organic fuck. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, he got a gallon of it. You know, no, he went to, uh, where's those, what's that place where you buy everything in bulk? Those fucking whales are pushing around those pallet jacks buying Cheerios. You got to get a membership to it. It begins with a C. It's not Cunties. What's, what's the name of that? Sh- I never go to the fucking place. Once I had to go in there and get a membership, they wanted all this fucking information. Um. Oh Christ! What the fuck is it called? Not coat check. I'm never gonna remember it. You know what I'm saying? That just kills the jokes, Bill. When you can't remember the fucking references, it just it absolutely kills it. Costco. Hey, he went to Costco. He bought one of those big fucking uh, gallons of fucking jizz. It on a dairy chugged it. Anyway, so there's here's something on El Chapo. El Chapo. They said. uh I can't remember. Like, just fucking killed this person's whole family. Took their kids and, and somebody. This is why I don't believe it. Like, took his kids and then flew them to uh, 
to Colombia and then threw him off a bridge. It's like, really? There's not any bridges in uh, Mexico? You never know what to believe. But I got to tell you, when you go south of the U.S., you do not want to piss anybody off as far as I can tell. That's some next level shit. And I can say that because I just read papers from the United States. <laughs> they, uh, that's just, that's just next level. Like, you know, you're mad at somebody and then, you know, how you get your revenge is just some next. I, I read that, uh, killing Pablo one time. I had to put the book down like three times. Some of the shit they just said that the guy did. Now, I don't know if the fucking guy did this shit, but I remember one time hearing that the guy had a party. All right. And everybody's out there by the pool standing around, you know. And uh, what's his face there? Pablo Escobar standing there. You know, everybody's ignoring the weight that he's putting on as he sits there in his fucking Hager action slacks. You know, he seemed to like those. He stretched. And, uh, you know, still tucked him in right at the waist. You know what I mean? Tucked him right in the waist. Didn't push the pants down. Didn't do the fucking shirt untucked. He tucked it right in. And uh, they said that he, he allegedly found one of his, uh, one of the people, you know, one of his, not his, but one of the maids, I don't know what, allegedly was stealing. So they tied this guy's legs together and his arms behind the, his back and they threw him in the house pool and just watched him drown as everyone was standing there at the party. You know? I'd say there must have been a lot of ice shaking and drinks after that one. Like, <laughs> so is this a Victorian house? Pablo, Mr. Escobar, I don't want to go in the pool. Um, yeah, people getting their faces ripped off. Is it torture and death? They're like peeling their fucking faces back. This is not funny. This is not what this podcast is about. You know, speaking of dying, by the way, speaking of death, um, you know, I went on the uh, Internet today and I was looking up. Uh, uh, where the fuck is it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Install later. Get out of here. Beat it. Try in an hour. Try tonight. Jesus, how can you be more fucking needy? All right. Where is it? New York City discusses world's largest tax-funded mass grave might be turned into a park. Now, I lived in New York. Start spreading the news. I'm wearing sweatpants. I'm gonna go down to Ted Stakes. And eat some shit. And I'll feel like I'm making it there. And you know, successful New Yorkers think just because they're in Manhattan. You know what I mean? Everybody looks at themselves like they're the star. You know, no one sees themselves as background. You know what I mean? You're the ones waving up at the Beatles. You're not in the Beatles. You understand? You're the one in the crowd screaming, you know, fainting as security takes you out as you're looking at somebody successful. Right? That's who you are. Yeah, those people already on the subway as they try to jam another person in there. And the world needs you. The world needs you. Okay? If I can go to White Castle and eat boo-doo-doo, 18 of those burgers, I'll be a fat titted fuck in the upper deck. Um, sorry. All right. World's largest tax-funded mass grave. So there's an island out there, which I had no idea... Uh, I mean, I knew of Ellis Island, and then there's the island that the Statue of Liberty is on. Then I knew there was one that the Navy owned or some shit. But there's this other island out there that um, they just bury people that don't have any money or nobody knows who the fuck they are. It's called Heart Island, or as a tourist from Boston would say, fucking Heart Island. Let's go out to Heart Island, dude. Maybe we can find our fucking uncle. Got in trouble with a bookie. Um, Heart Island, New York. Rosalie Grable looks down over rows of white pipes, some broken or covered in mud, sticking out of the dirt. Each tube marks the grave of 150 adults, uh, dash homeless, poor veterans and unclaimed individuals who couldn't afford anything but a spot in what's widely to believe to be the world's largest tax funded mass grave. You know, tax funded mass grave, not mass grave, because believe me. I think, isn't there one underneath, uh, isn't there one underneath like Wall Street? They just massacred a bunch of Native Americans or some shit, then they just bury them all. Isn't that what they used to do back then? All right, that takes care of that. Who wants to build a log cabin, right? Lunatics. Um, 
So whatever, Grable, a 64-year-old resident of the Upper, Upper West Side, wants grass and wildflowers to hide the dirty white plastic. She's come here to honor her mother, who died in a hospital bed with no savings to leave to her daughter. She said, I'm still getting used to the idea that my mommy wound, uh, still calls her mommy, that's creepy, uh, wound up in a potter's grave. I know that's my mother, I know that my mother was expecting something more, much more traditional. I don't understand people who, like, when they die, they want to have one of those above ground fucking, like, tombs. You know, like the above, it's like the above ground swimming pool of grave sites. You know, it's like, how fucking special do you think you are? Who gives it? You're dead. They should just have mass graves. They should have a giant pit. You just fucking, you know, the family doesn't need to see it, but you just fucking throw it in there. Throw it in there, and then as you dissolve, you become the next fossil fuel, right? Think about all the fucking people that have lived in the world. If we had in one giant fucking massive grave in each country, and you used whatever fucking, whatever, I, I don't know how the fuck you end up turning into motor oil, but evidently that's what happens. I know if you jump off a building, you explode like a water balloon because you're mostly water. And uh, I don't know, if you eat a lot of Italian food, you know, like I do, you got a lot of olive oil in you, who knows? Maybe you may help out somebody's fucking lawnmower in the future. That's what they should do. Holy shit, did I just solve global warming? Or maybe I solved the Middle East crisis. And if elected, I will begin burying all dead Americans in the same hole. And a hundred years from now, we will use the fossil fuel that that has created to free ourselves from the Saudi Arabians. I am so sick of seeing world leaders go to the UN and act like we have a friend, uh, some sort of a friendship. Um, I don't know if that's, that's something you could do. But anyways, I became fascinated with that expression. I hope I'm saying it right. Potter's grave. So I looked it up. And of course, you know, my research on the internet, on the internet never goes past Wikipedia. Never goes past it, you know. Uh, all right. A potter's field, comma, pauper's field, or a common grave is a term for a place for the burial of unknown or indigent people or is that indigent all right so i clicked on indigent or indigent i don't isn't it astounding how fucking dumb i think most astounding about how stupid i am is the fact that you guys fucking listen to this i actually thought i was halfway smart until i started reading out loud here i-n-d-i-g-e-n-t indigent indigent you say tomato i say indigent what indigent indigent i'm just gonna stop saying it. i just i'm just i feel like every time i say it i'm like fucking i'm like that guy i'm playing blackjack going hit me hit me hit me over over your fucking iq is just going down all right so i looked up uh <laughs> that word that i'm not gonna say anymore oh god is it possible to get embarrassed on a podcast that only you are doing you know if it's possible, I'm doing it. All right, pop, and, I, and it, what ends up coming up is poverty. Poverty is a general scarcity, dearth, or the slate of one's money. Well, what the? F How did this come to? Uh, after the Industrial Revolution, mass production in factories made product production goods increasingly less expensive and more accessible. Of more importance is the modernization of the agriculture and fertilizers. Poverty reduction is a major goal. Oh, give me a fuck. Is it really? Is it really a major goal when the fucking CEO takes 80% of the profits? Huh? One of the guys who's fucking working the line, his daughter's already hooking, is up in the CEO's office blowing him. You know? Because she can't go to fucking call and then the circle is complete. Oh, that was a little poetry there. All right, the U.S. expression. Let me get back to the uh, Potter's Field. The U.S. expression potter's field derives from the bible oh jesus referring to a field used for the extraction of potter's clay such land used for agriculture could be used as a burial site so after they dug out all the clay they just threw people in there well there you go that's a good use of space all right, the term comes from, oh, let's, let's read some Bible. Oh, my God, I've never done this. Read some Bible. Let's read from the Bible. The term comes from Matthew 27, semicolon, no, colon, 3-27, colon, 8, in the New Testament of the Bible, in which Jewish priests take 
30 pieces of silver returned by a remorseful Judas. Colon. Oh, geez. This would be some anti-Semitic shit. Okay. And then this is what it says. Then Judas, who portrayed him. I think that's J-Star. He, he betrayed J-Star there. Uh, seeing that he was condemned, repenting himself, brought back the 30 pieces of silvers to the chief priests and ancients, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? Look thou to it. Yeah, there you go. There's the anti-Semitism right there. Hey, what do we give a shit? Just give us the silver pieces there, uh, Judy. <laughs> and casting down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself with a halter. The, you know, halter top? They had those back then? But he hanged himself with a little fucking sports bra? Uh, but the chief priest, having taken the pieces of silver, said it's not lawful to put them into the Corbona. Didn't Chrysler used to make those? The Chrysler Corbona with Corinthian leather. The term mite box. What the f a mite box? Isn't that a bug? Also, alms box or poor box refers to a box that is used to save coin or a piggy bank. That's what you should say to save coins for charitable purposes. Oh, for charitable purposes. Oh, so then, okay, I get it. So then they say, wait a minute. This guy killed the uh, king of the Jews and we're sitting here with the fucking loot from the caper. Well, go stick it in the fucking donation box. And nobody says a word. You got me? All right. And then after that, they had consulted together. You know what? This might be a new section. You want me to guys? I'll start reading the fucking Bible. And I'll give you my interpretation of it. Gradually, I'll start my own church. Right? And I'll say that I have a direct link to he that is the oneth. And then gradually I'll slide my direct length over into just saying, hey, uh, maybe I'm that guy. I am that guy. I am him. Uh, blow me. I'm fucking all the women here. And uh, you guys get out in the field and grow some more apples. That's basically fast forwarding through running a cult. Oh, is the FBI here? Everybody drink this. Over the lips and over the gums. Suck it down. Here they come. All right. The site referred to these verses known as... That's really interesting and fucking sad. There is something sad about that, right? Has anybody ever had like a fucking marquee on their head site? You know, like a big gravestone? And then just have like, you know, like the Chicago theater, but like to scale to a headstone? performing here for eternity or some hacky fucking former show business oh christ now i gotta look this shit up now i gotta look this shit up those people who have wacky headstones saying here we go funny headstones all right here we go what do we got here what do we got here images for funny headstones now what are the odds any of these are going to be funny all right Charlie, oh, this is just a funny name. Charlie Loser, born in 1887, and John Loser. Jesus Christ, they're such losers. They're buried in the same fucking place. Joke's over. Let me out now. Uh, Leslie Nielsen, he's got a joke on his. What does it say? Let her rip. I don't know what the fuck that means. Well, these are just funny names. Stiff, Titman, Boogers, Spanks. Who put this up here? Fucking Beepus and Buffett? Butthead? One's bu ah, I thought I meant funny sayings. Jesus Christ, the internet. Funny sayings. Headstones. Here we go. Oh, my God. This is a riot. Oh, epitaphs. Here we go. Fifteen of the funniest epitaphs. All right. Somebody has dot, dot, dot. Well, this sucks. That's not bad. Billy Wilder, I'm a writer, but then nobody's perfect. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It's such an NPR joke. Uh, Jack Lemon in. Oh, it's like a movie headstone. Jack Lemon was one hell of an actor and a funny one to boot. Here's his, here he stars in his final role. Well, in the ground. Ah, that's a good one. Uh, this one gets to the point. Well, this sucks. It was another one. All right, this one, this ain't bad once you get used to it. That's not bad. 
I was supposed to live to be 102 and be shot by a jealous husband. Near this spot. You know something? Actually, if they were all interesting, I think people would go to fucking graveyards more rather than getting creeped out by it. Um, near this spot, Samuel Whitmore, then 80 years old, killed three British soldiers. He was shot. He was shot, bayoneted, beaten, and left for dead, but recovered and lived to be 90 years of age. This guy's talking shit. Here I lie, but don't you cry, for one day, too, you will die. Ah, oh, what a cunt. Leslie Nielsen, let her rip. Merv Griffin, I will not be right back after this message. <laughs> There's the winner right there. I like that. Somebody wrote, ha, get it? Such a comedian. You can't make anybody happy on the Internet. All right, Bill Kugel. He never voted for Republicans and had little to do with them. Ugh. That was bad. Here's one said, I told you I was sick. That's, that's funny. Another one, I knew this would happen. Some of these are pretty good. Rodney Dangerfield, there goes the neighborhood. Here lies something, something. He hanged by mistake in 1882. He was right. We was wrong. But we stand him up. And now he's gone. Oh, dude, you can't go with poetry. I guess that's it. Well, there you go, guys. That's about as good as it gets. And you know you can do better. Why don't you just have what the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's read the advertising, shall we? A lot of death, a lot of death this week, a lot of death on the podcast. Um, all right. Um, all right. One trick pony. Uh, hey, Billy Balls. Uh, my wife loved your pie crust video. Oh, by the way, you know, I tried lot in my um, for my crust for the first time, and it was a total game changer. The best crust I ever made. It did feel weird to smell bacon as I was making the pie crust. But um, um, uh, thank you to everybody that suggested that, who, you know, the, your critique really helped my pie crust. Thank you. Um, all right. So anyways, he, this person says, she's a fan of yours as well. She loved the pie crust video. She's a fan of yours as well and has been exposed to hours of your podcast. She likes you, Bill. Let me lead with that. Well, here comes the big fucking slap in the face. But of course... Like all great women, she still has a capacity to chop a man down at the knees. After the video, I casually said, can't wait for the next one. She responded in an oh, sweetie tone with, ha ha, well, how many of these tricks do you think he has up his sleeve? This resulted in a long discussion where I defended your potential skills, and she went with the, I love Bill Burr. I'm just assuming he doesn't have much more to rival this pie crust. Uh, whether you can make a full series out of these videos or not, can you please explain to my wife that you're not a one-trick pony? And even if you are a one-trick pony, it's bullshit and unfair to assume this much. Uh, thanks. Come back to Wisconsin, home of corruption, as seen in documentaries. Um, well, you know something? As you get older as a man, you understand where that's coming from. Why your wife, as you said, like all great women, always have to take you out of the knees. What it is, as much as you got to stop internalizing that and taking it personally, what it is, is that's, it's almost like a subconscious fear thing that they have. You know what I mean? Like when they don't know you and they see you doing something, they have a positive reaction to it going, oh, look, he can make a pie crust. I bet he's going to be a great dad, right? They think shit like that. But after they get with you and then they love you and they don't want to lose you, when they see you continuing to grow as a person, they it's – I can't even say this is a female thing. This is like a, a thing in general that people do in relationships – is you actually hold back the person you love because you see them expanding on who they are and because it's something new and different and moves in a different direction. I think subconsciously a certain type of person feels insecure. So then they, they have to tether it to the ground with fucking uh, criticism rather than encouraging the person. So I think that that's where it's coming from. But um, as far as addressing it, like... I will just say this as far as my cooking and baking, like you don't just know how to make cornflakes and you can also make a pie crust. You know what I mean? 
Knowing how to make a pie crust takes all of your shit to the next level. Okay? Like, no, like, know this. Because I can do that, like, back in the day, I used to look at, like, making, like, a quiche or something like that going, oh, my God, that's fucking impossible, the crust alone. Or making a turkey pot pie or anything that involves having a crust. Um, you can add that. I recently have learned how to smoke meat. You know, I smoke ribs. Uh... I can make all of my, my, my mother, before we, when we all moved out, she wrote out all of her recipes, hand wrote them all out on cards and we have all of them and we can all cook the meals that she made when we were growing up. Like I can make you Hungarian goulash and you know what else? I can make the fucking noodles from scratch. I took a pasta making class, you know, as you suspected, sir, your wife has no idea what the fuck she's talking about. What it really was, it was coming from a place of insecurity and jealousy. And right now she's going to roll her eyes and be like, oh, my God, blah, 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 blah. It's fucking true. You know, because that's really just like a just like to have like that, that, oh, sweetie tone. You know, how they do that shit. You know, you go out. You start looking a little too good. You get a new new suit, right? You're looking a little. They got to fucking. They got to got to make a comment. They they fucking do it with each other. It's hilarious. I think that's one of the main reasons that's fucking them up. By the way, you know when they always talk about the wage gap and all that. One of the biggest problems with the wage gap is not men. It's the fact that women don't get together and create businesses enough. They just don't do it because they're too busy going, look at this bitch and fucking look at her. With the, she's too fucking skinny. She needs to eat something. She's got on too much fuck. Oh, she knows what she's doing. You know, they don't work well together. I don't know why, but that's not our fault. I'm sure it is, though. If you watch the view, I'm sure they could spin it around to us. So, um, yes, sir. I actually absolutely love cooking and um, it isn't the only trick I have up my sleeve. Um, I could obviously make more of those, but the thing about it was, was that was a specific skill. It was for the holidays and people have suggested, well, why don't you do one on how to smoke meat? Or why don't you do one about making pasta from scratch? My thing is because you could watch Mario Batali do it. You can watch champion smokers do it. So I guess what makes mine different is that I make it funny. You know, I just looked at it as a, a one fucking random thing that I was going to do. But, you know, now that she's been a douche about it, you know what? I'll make another one at some point, I guess. Um, I'll Let's see. What the fuck will I do? The turkey pot pie on the big green egg. I mean, I've watched YouTube videos of all of those. I just didn't really saw somebody do like a... Is there a pie crust video? I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun. I literally feel like I'm in a relationship right now. I'm sorry that that video annoyed you. <laughs> oh, God, they're so fucking moody. Uh, yeah, I will I will figure out something else um, to make one of those. I'll do like one a year. No, it's actually giving me some ideas. Like maybe I'll do one. Oh, the summer's coming. All right, you're going to show up the 4th of July. Here's a quick fucking thing you can make. You know, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it. I just don't like committing to shit like that. I love not having a job, which is why I'm a fucking comedian. I, I really enjoy this whole I work when I want to rather than being, okay, we need 20 episodes of this. All right, Thursday afternoon podcast got me laid, Bill. Oh, something positive. Oh, John, do you really think you could get somebody else laid? It's a fucking disease. Um, <laughs> it's probably why we die eight years earlier, just because they just won't give it up. But if you get yourself out in front of it, Next time your wife does that to you, sir, next time she takes you out at the knees, just come up to her and stroke the side of her face. You know, when you go out and get a new car and you oh, honey, don't you think you're a little bit old for that car? You know, does one of those things, makes you feel stupid, right? Just walk up, stroke the side of her face. Just go, oh, sweetie, don't worry. I'm not going to leave you. <laughs> it's okay. Shh, it's okay. I know I look good in the car. I'm sorry. Something like that. Something creepy. All right. Bill, last week on New Year's Eve, my wife and I listened to your podcast after we put the kids to bed. We drank wine and laughed our asses off. That's great. This woke us up, energized us. Just as the throwback clip came on, it appeared that we may have sex to ring in the new year. Well, boy, oh boy, not more than a few notes into the outro song, we were going at it. It was all... 
over just moments after the song ended. So maybe four minutes or so of ball dropping bliss. My dick thanks you for the laughs and the soundtrack. Did you guys fuck to the me undie song? I don't think I needed to know that. I actually, um, I bought another one of these yachting magazines because I don't, it's just fucking hilarious to me that the, the, this one's called showboats, right? And on the cover, it says to boldly go where no man has gone before. And they're talking about the Northwest passage from death trap to trendy fucking transit and the Bermuda triangle, true tales of the unexplained. So that was actually interesting as, as hell. But then, like, peppered in between the stories is, like, like this, like, an advertisement for, like, a $250,000 fucking watch. <laughs> watch. My voice should have cracked in. Somebody just can walk around with the Ferrari. And then they got this one page that says Owner's Club, where readers of the magazine, you become part of the Owner's Club, and you send in a picture of you and your creepy fucking rich family. You know, so they got this old ass fucking guy, right? He looks like he's at least 70. His wife's in his, in his it looks like to be in her 50s, Botoxed out. And then they got three fucking creepy kids that are like only in like their, their teens and 20s, you know, and they all looked a little fucked up. You know what I mean? Because rich people want to hold on to their money. So they they sit there and they they kind of fuck in the same cul-de-sac out there on the Hamptons. And after a while, they all start looking like each other. You know what I mean? Then they got these weird sort of ailments, like purebred dogs, like they can't go swimming because their ears always fill up with water. They can't come out, and then they get like these fucking infections or something. I have no idea, but anyways, these cunts want to start sailing up the Amazon River. Do you know what I realized? There's no fucking way I'm going to be able to do the advertising because I'm too afraid to leave. I'm too afraid to leave this area, like it's going to, of my phone, like it's going to shut off. So I'm just going to have to go straight through. Like I said, dude, if, if you guys are actually hearing this, it's an absolute miracle. So anyways, these cunts want to fucking, you know, sail their yachts up the Amazon River. Why would you want to do that? You know why? Because you're sick to, of going to these fucking eyes wide shut parties. And no matter where you took your yacht, there's some other cunt there going like, oh, yeah, I've taken my boat there. And you want to have something new to talk about, right? You got a $250,000 watch. He's got a $260,000 watch. You feel bored. You know what I mean? How are you going to get some 50-year-old Botox woman to come over and jump on your 80-year-old dick, you know, and fuck you on your helipad on your boat? How the fuck are you going to do that? You know, you got to take your boat where no other people go. So these cunts are going to go up the Amazon River, right? And, uh, you know, this pristine area. You got people living up there where, uh, you know... How people used to live hundreds of thousands of fucking years ago, whatever the fuck it is, I don't know. But you know what's cool is there's pirates up and down that thing. So at some point, one of these rich cunts is gonna get killed. I guarantee you. And I can't I don't even give a fuck if they can't like board the boat. At some point someone's gonna be like, Well fuck it then, I'll just climb up a tree and I'll shoot one of these fucking darts at them, or whatever they do. You know? You know, aren't there some cannibalistic fucking uh Tribes out there? How great would that be? How great would the fucking meat be? Those rich people, they must be like veal. After all... <laughs> After all these fucking years of fighting other tribes, you know? These guys are fucking, you know, climbing trees and running through the forest. They're fucking athletes. They're, they're tough, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, if take this NFL game here, man. If you were going to eat somebody who went to this NFL game, right, you wouldn't want to eat an NFL player. I'm saying if your plane crashed, you had to fucking do it. You're on the team flight, right? You don't want to eat an NFL player. I mean, that guy's fucking shredded. You know what I mean? Maybe a lineman. That'd be eating like a fucking ribeye. You know, nice and marbled. Find a good cut of meat. <laughs> it's fucking underbelly would be like that fucking, the underbelly, like all the Japanese guys like that fucking, uh, that sushi, right? That's fucking disgusting. But I'm just saying, so what? It's disgusting to us because we have all these options. You know, first world problems, as people like to say. I love when people say that. Oh, first world problem. Well, I live in a first world, so everything I have is a first world problem. I could be completely fucking 
dead ass bro a homeless guy in the United States has first world problems. Okay? Shitting on a subway grate. You know what I mean? Exposing himself so he can get a night in jail and maybe he can maybe get some fucking some porridge, or whatever the fuck they feed prisoners. All right? That's still a first world problem because he's part of our economy. You know what I mean? You know what's funny? If somebody lives in a third world, can't get a, can't get a girlfriend, is that a third world problem? It's still a third world problem. He's in a third world and no one will suck his dick. Right? I need some clarification on this. Anyways, what the fuck was I talking about? Okay, so you got these fucking tribes or whatever, these people that, you know, they got one pair of shorts their whole life. You know what I mean? Their environmental footprint, their carbon footprint is, is, is basically nothing. You know, and now here come these rich cunts up the river and I'm calling it right now. For the first time in the history of the world, a billionaire is going to get eaten. They're going to shrink down his fucking head. You know, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. His watch will end up at the bottom of the fucking Amazon. Um, it really is. Actually, you know something when I when there was, there's a lot about, um, to be serious here for the first time in 21 fucking minutes. There's a lot about owning a boat and navigating it that overlaps with aviation as far as like compasses and, uh, you know, magnetic deviation and variation and, uh, dead reckoning. And then also the, that sinking fucking feeling that you just killed yourself <laughs> when something out of the ordinary happens when a light comes on or something like that. I, there's no way unless you fly or you, you own a boat and you leave where you can't see land. There's no way to describe that fucking nauseating feeling of, oh, fuck, am I that guy? Um, which, of course, is totally balanced out by the unbelievable thrill of it. Um, I remember I, I took a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago. It was like three years ago, but it seems like a long time ago. I was um, I was in Boston. I was staying in the North End. It was fucking great. And I was doing that movie, The Heat. And um, my wife came to town. And um, so I wanted to take her out. And they had these, these water taxis. So I was like, oh, I had a little romance to this thing. We'll jump on the water taxi. And we'll go over to this different part of the city. And we'll go get something to eat or whatever. I can't remember what the fuck we were doing. And I got to tell you something, man. The second I got out there on that boat, all right? And we were going by, and there was and this guy knew all this shit, and he goes, look at that giant boat. You see that giant boat right there? That boat's owned by the, uh, the fucking uh, owner of the Red Sox. It was this giant fucking yacht, right? And I'm terrified of the ocean and that type of shit, you know what I mean? And, but I got to admit, the second I got out there on that boat, immediately the temptation to do something fucking illegal was, was, was off the charts, I, I, there's no way I, I could own a boat. Well, I wouldn't do it. The fear of fucking going to jail and then getting fucking butt raped. That always keeps you in line, doesn't it? But still, you know what I mean? You're just thinking like, dude, nobody's going to stop. What is, what is going to stop me if I took a kilo from this city to another city? You know? Then you got to interact with them, right? Who the fuck's going to give you the kilo? What the fuck's that guy going to do? All of a sudden, he fucking... He comes on the boat with you. Next thing you know, he he, he he does a Kleinfeld, right? One of my favorite fucking characters of all time. Never tell you guys how much I love that movie that I can't remember the name of, but I know remember Sean Penn's uh, character's name. Carlito's Way. Lawyer. You ain't a lawyer, Kleinfeld. You a gangster. Um... Hey, I'm not getting mad at you, huh? That guy when he's got the fucking the cough. There's a lot of great character actors in that movie. All right, dating someone with zero ambition. Hey, Billy Dickfingers. I don't even know what the fuck that means. But I like it. I gotta tell you, I like it. Hey, Billy Dickfingers. I recently started listening to your podcast and you got me hooked. Always loved your stand-up. And when I found out you have a podcast... Shit was like a gift from God. Oh, aren't you a sweetheart? Um, anyways, anyways, I've been dating this lady 
for almost three years now. Things are going well, but I'm starting to get a little concerned about her. She started hanging around some people who I feel are a bad influence to her. They drink and she lets them drive her drunk. Oh, God, that's not good. And all they do is smoke pot and dick around. Now, I like when my girl uh, can get out of the house and go have fun with her friends, but it's starting to influence her personality. And whenever I try to call her out, she says bullshit like, okay, mom, or let me live my life. I've recently been getting my creative slash ambitious crunch on and I'm working on big things, turning my hobby of music into a profession. I'm trying to come up successfully in life and found myself at a critical point where I need to cut all the negative people out of my life. Dude, you got your fucking head screwed on straight. Exactly. You're doing shit. She's not doing shit. Right? This goes the same way, the other way around. If you're a woman and you got your shit together and you're with somebody who does not have their shit together, you should be looking at, you know, and you fired some warning shots and they're like, okay, mom, whatever. It's just like, all right, dude. All right, go live that life. But those fucking people will drag you down with them. All right? Goddamn anchor around your neck. So anyways, continue. I love this email so far. Um, right now, her lack of ambition and need to sit around all day and smoke pot is kind of soul-crushing and disappointing. I really love this girl, but I'm afraid I'll lose her to these shithead friends and she'll become a completely different person how do i try and help her get her shit together without seeming like a controlling douche thanks and go fuck yourself well i would memorize your last three sentences and i would just say it to her in a nice way just say listen i'll paraphrase what you wrote i really love you but i'm afraid that i'm gonna lose you i right, these shithead friends all right i can't do it doing it listen you just sit her down just say listen i need to talk to you all right put down the bond focus all right you know i love you but i gotta tell you i've been concerned with the people that you've been hanging around with lately and i'm really feeling like it's starting to influence let me finish just let me finish you don't have to agree with me i feel like it's influencing your behavior before you hung out with these people you were doing x y and z now you just kind of sit around the house smoking pot all day and it's soul crushing to me Okay, it doesn't motivate me, and I love you, and to see you sitting there doing nothing with your life is killing me. All right? I need you to turn it around. Okay? And this is not a little thing. This is a major crossroads. I can't say that. That's Just say, I need you to, turn, I need you to, to do something about it. And then this is the deal. Either she does or she doesn't. And if she doesn't, you fucking walk. Because I don't give a fuck how much you love this woman. You're going to end up resenting her and hating her because she's going to take you down with her. That's it. That's the mom. That's the mother of your kids sitting around fucking, you know, smelling like bong water, watching Bravo TV all fucking day. You can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have it. That's it. All right? This is what you take her out back like fucking, uh, like Polly. Remember when Polly talked to Henry Hill about drugs? Stay away from that shit. I'm not saying slap her in the face. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, just sit there as you're cooking something. Stay away from that shit, all right? I don't want that shit in my life. That's not going to happen to me, all right? I got a friend of mine. He's got a wife who's a total fucking pothead, okay? He's only making 30 grand a year. That guy was on his way to being an executive, right? That ain't happened for me. He's going to die in that cubicle. That ain't happening to me. Dude, you, you, you're doing exactly what you need to do here. And you're questioning the right thing. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be successful in life because not only did you recognize this in the person that you're with, despite the fact that you love them, all right, you motivated yourself and you understand already to get negative people out of your life, dude. You got to fucking do it. Okay, this is, this is a one-time conversation. All right? That's it. Get your shit together. You say it nicely. All right? If you don't see, you don't see them turning around, that's it. That's it. Fuck that, dude. There's so many fucking great, motivated people out there that you could be with. Okay? You don't, you don't need this shit. The fuck are you with? You're already a parent. You're not even a parent yet. You got a big fucking baby sitting there. That's on drugs. The worst kind of a baby. An adult one. On drugs. Ah, you got me heated here. Sorry.